Byers defending the goal to our right here in the first and third period. The Bruins to our left. Bruce Hood, the referee. Neil Armstrong and Ron Finn are tonight's linesmen. Clark between Kelly and Leach with Jim Watson and Bob Daly. Flyers trying to keep their Stanley Cup playoff hopes alive as they buy in game four. Flyers control the faceoff. Jim Watson across to Daly. Trying to move out against the four checking McNabb and Wensing to Jim Watson. Shovels it down the left wing boys, but we have an offside called immediately against the Flyers. Rather than gambling with going the inexperience of a Mike Corney or Al Hill, and despite his injury, which puts him at a disadvantage, the Flyers have dressed Mel Bridgman. Terry, I look for the Bruins are really coming out flying to see if they can't get on the board early a couple of times and really stick it to Philadelphia. On the faceoff, Clark gets a stick on it, fires at long range, stopped by Chevers, lays it for Mike Milbury. Milbury off his right wing board. Terry O'Brien gladly deflects it ahead. He's offside. It's now the second part. Clark's going to get a penalty for Hooker. Well, I think. Uh, Bobby was left with no alternative as the Bruins would have had a two-on-one without Clark's efforts. So the Bruins on the playoffs were uh, six for 29 on the power play, just one for five, and one for six against Philadelphia. Come up with a Clark hook at 25 seconds in the power play coming up. Bobby Clark was talking to uh, linesman Neil Armstrong, and I th I'm sure that Bobby thinks that that was a two-line pass, which was awful close to being it also. I think Peter McNabb was two lines over, and as you mentioned, Clark was chasing him. He broke in, but I'm almost positive that puck come from behind in their blue line. Over two lines, McNabb picked that puck up offside. Well, I called the offside as the play was going on, uh, Terry, so uh, that's what surprised me. Okay, on the face-off, Flyers short-handed. Kindrachuk lifts it out of the Flyers on the length of the ice. And the dialogue was continuing as play started up between Bobby Clark and lineman Ron Finn. Okay, it's Shepard going to his left wing, picked up by Cashman. Goes right wing to Bobby Smut. Let's it to the Flyers back for it. Bob Daly on it. Taps it away from Mattel. Up to Kim to Chuck near side. Kept in by Shepard. Shepard to the Flyers back for it. Picked up by Jim Watson. Gets it up on the left wing to Selesky. He can't clear it out. Cashman back to Park. Now picked up by Jim Watson. He can't lift it out. Selesky checking Rattel. Cashman battles Jim Watson in to help out his Kim to Chuck. Now the puck is at center ice on the Flyers' left wing. Selesky battles right in front of the Flyers' bench with Rattel. Now Cashman in there. Cashman stopped at the line. Loose puck picked up by Selesky. Finally clears it to the right wing corner of the Boston end as we're down to less than a minute left on the Clark hook. Now it's McLeish and Lonsbury, the penalty killers, with Joe, uh, Joe Watson and Tom Bladen defensively as Brad Park takes a feed from Shepard up to center ice for Rattel. Gets it across the Flyers line on the left wing for Cashman. Goes back to Rattel, but it inadvertently is deflected in on Stevenson. He ties it up for a face-off on the circle of his, uh, his right. Don Cherry said he advised Brad Park no end-to-end -end rushes, but he's done more, more of it, particularly beginning with the game on Sunday, or last Thursday. Captain Bobby Clark looking on. Still has 38 seconds remaining in his stripping penalty to uh, McNabb. And Boston still has a power play for that length of time. Rattel against McLeish, comes back to Shepard, top of the far circle to Park at the line. Deflected in front, but it's tied up in someone's equipment. Finally drops out of Joe Watson's as he had Bobby Smots tied up in the slot to the right of Wayne Stevenson. Steph's played superbly since coming in for Bernie Perron after the first two games of Toronto. And again, the Bruins doing what they do so well, jamming front. That puck got sandwiched between Joey Watson and Bobby Smots, as you mentioned, Don, and very wisely by Joey took the face off. DuPont intercepts that face-off hit on Stevenson, and it's cleared to center ice along the left wing by Ross Lonsbury. Dumped right back in on uh, the far wing. Bladen looks for an opening and rifles it over the heads of everyone to the Boston left wing corner. Sheavers handles it, drops it off behind his net to Shepard. Clark will be out in 14 seconds. Pucky Lewis McNabb goes deep in the flyer zone. Icing is waved off. DuPont swings the net. Deflected by Lonsbury back to the Boston line where it's Brad Park. Goes left side for Milbury. The rookie across the Flyers line, blocked off, gets it to Smuts. Drive on Stevenson, what a save as he drops down to both knees as Marcotte was crowding along the, the post, and it's tied up for faceoff. 17.31 to go in the first period. There's no score. Clark came out from the right wing boards by Schmutz. Stevenson saw it all the way and made the big save. Rick Middleton seeing his first action since uh, missing game three. 
Scored the game around and suddenly up overtime in game one. Joe Watson can't move it out. The right wing board wrapped right back to the back floor where it's Bob Daly. Flyers going with Kendra Chuck, Barber, and Holmgren. Here's Daly. Tries from outside, deflected wide by the skate of Gary Doak. Cheevers takes the carom and gives it off to Milbury, who starts out. Lead pass for Middleton across the Flyers line on the right wing. Swept to the corner by Jim Watson. He sidesteps a Watson check. Jonathan overskates. Middleton taken down. And back to the Flyers comes Mel Bridgman. Moves it ahead too far for Barber to reach, and it's picked up on the Boston end by Milbury. Milbury goes far side. The Flyers right wing. Bridgman broken up as he's double teamed. Jonathan wraps it around the Flyers board. As Stevenson intercepts, and now we've got something going across the way. All the point and Jonathan, and Rick got in the first good one, and Jonathan following up left and right, and has LaPointe off balance. Now LaPointe with another right or right. They both wear helmets, an uppercut by LaPointe as they're in a bear hug. Another one. Now he's got uh, Jonathan's helmet off, and he's got the advantage. Jonathan trying to pull LaPointe down, and does, by getting the right leg up in the air and a wrestler's grip, and they fall down, and the fans roar here as that's the tantamount to victory in one of these battles. I'll tell you one thing, Gene. I was talking with one of the Bruins uh, officials before this game. He was talking about young standout Jonathan. He says from the waist up, he is as big as any Bruin they have on their club. And right now we have Mel Bridgman and Rick Smith also hanging on. And DuPont in the DuPont has the clarinet with Gary Doak are doing the arm wrestling. With a squeeze on Watch him. Watch out. Doak and DuPont. And Rose Hood, in order to cut this down quickly, might tell them, look, knock it off or game misconducts for delay of the game. Now everybody's gathered around in front of the flyer net and Wayne Stevenson is doing a Ken Dryden and everybody else is piled in there. Finally they're separated and let's see if Broodhead wants to shake them off. Yes, I think he is. They're both going off as well. So we've got our first bit of fireworks at 319. Jonathan LaPointe Doak and DuPont, and we'll give you the penalties after we remind you. 16-41 remaining in a scoreless first period. First, uh, Forrest off. Back here at the Boston Garden, we've got majors, I'm sure, to LaPointe and uh, San Jonathan for fighting, and then probably roughing minors to DuPont and Doak. As I was mentioning earlier, Gene, young Stan Jonathan is a tough customer in his own right. In the L.A. series, I was informed that he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Davy Schultz, and they just stood back and let them go, and it was just a standoff because they both got tired of swinging and finally just a mutual agreement went to the penalty box, so he is no easy cookie for Rick LaPointe to tangle with. All right, here what the penalties were. Jonathan and LaPointe, each five for fighting, and oddly enough, DuPont, two for holding, and uh, Doak, two minutes for roughing. Doak threw a punch, and I think that's why he got the roughing, and uh, Moose did not throw a punch, so he got it just for holding. I noticed Rick LaPointe heading to the dressing room, so possibly that'll be for some equipment being repaired to him, as he should be back in time to be out when his five minutes are up. So we have fireworks and early going, Don, with 16.41 remaining in the first period. We've got the makings of a royal battle. Strangely enough, it's been Boston fans who have been... Uh, the ones to ask the question, why are the Flyers so tame in this series? Well, maybe they're getting their wish. Okay. All right, Jonathan now 20 minutes on the playoffs. LaPointe, 7. DuPont, 33. And Gary Doak on the playoffs, 22. Now we got the ever-present balloon, which normally doesn't crop up until uh, between the periods that made its way on the ice at the Boston end to our left. And it's Ron Finn who retrieves it. Face off top of the near circle to our to our right, controlled by Bob Daly. He's behind his own net. To Jim Watson, near side, goes far side for Lonsbury. Back to Daly, through center ice, sends McLeish across. Daly gets his stick on it, goes to the left wing corner of the Boston zone, tries to come back to McLeish. Lonsbury, a good check along the near side on O'Reilly, but it's O'Reilly who controls. Goes behind the Boston net. Starts out on the left wing. He's tied up by McLeish. And it's dumped to center ice by Milbury, but on the stick of Daly, up to McLeish. McLeish to Lonsbury, across the line, draw glove save as Cheevers couldn't grab it, but it was deflected off the glove to the Boston left wing board. Shepard, control for a moment, now picked up by Terry O'Reilly. He comes up high with a stiff arm in Bob Daly's face, and I think Mr. Daly took a note of that number. Now it's Milbury trying to dump it behind the net. He and Milbury go in after it. Jim Watson has O'Reilly tied up, but it's Milbury with the puck. 
He's taken to the backboards by Daly as Lonsbury takes the loose puck at the post from Wayne Stevenson. Now it's Lonsbury trying to move out. He's broken up by Shepard. Here comes O'Reilly. For O'Reilly, dumped hard by a forearm thrown by Bob Daly. O'Reilly down on the left in the right wing corner of the flyer zone. Puck kick loose. Shepard has it. Gets it back to Park at the right point. Can't keep it in the zone. Goes far side at the left point to Mike Milbury. Milbury uh, taken to the far boards. And he's got a hammerlock on Jim Watson. As they battle for the puck, it's Leach back passing to Daly. Daly challenged by Rattel. Feeds across near side to McLeish. Sends Leach away. Leach, the big bomb, but it's blocked by Mike Milbury. And sliding out to glove it is Jerry Cheevers. Goes it ahead to Rattel. And now to Bobby Smuts across the Flyers line. To drive into the midsection of Wayne Stevenson. Smuts uh, overskated a loose puck. Clark challenged by Rattel. The Smuts in the left wing corner. Back to Milbury. To the right point to Park. His drive wide short side. And Stevenson got a piece of it. Rattel goes back to Park again. Rolls it in front. Loose puck. Goes through the goal mouth. As Joe Watson battles for position with Smuts. Now it's Marcotte to Smuts. Deflected over the net. Marcotte in the right wing corner. Gets it back to Park. Park. Shot off the mark, and it's Blade getting it ahead to DuPont. As both teams are back at full strength. Intercepted by Rattel. To Spots. Both save on the short side. This time, Stevenson holds on to force the face off. Tenth anniversary edition of the yearbook available at the Spectrum for $2 with through the mail. For $2.50 to Champion Publications, Box 2429, Philadelphia, the zip 19147. Through the mail, it's $2.50. And Terry, that whole series began when Clark had clear possession in front of the net and delayed his action coming out. Archer was looking for somebody breaking out to give it to, and Bobby Schmott's doing a good forechecking job. He may be one of the more diminutive Boston Bruins, but he is one of the most dangerous you have out there, Don. You've seen him play for a few years, and if we had to take a player, say maybe compare him to Reggie Leach for as far as shooting goes for the Boston Bruins, your number one pick for the Bruins would have to be Bobby Schmott, because he can really wind that puck off that right wing from the top of the circle. He leads all goal scorers in this playoff year with nine. Off the face off to the left of Stevenson. Kindrichuk moves it ahead to Bladen at center. To the right side, Seleski mishandles up and gets the puck around the Boston boards. As he and uh, Daryl Edestrand, who's dressed tonight. Edestrand on defense right now with Doak for Boston as out comes Wayne Cashman. Cashman on the left wing. Gets it into the Flyers' left wing corner. Goes in after it. Goes behind it. That tries to one-hand it out front, but Bladen had him wrapped up. McNabb breaks up Kindrichuk. Lifts it behind the net to the left wing boards. Wensink to the left wing corner for Cashman. Centering pass deflected to the boards by the skate of Bill Barber, and he moves it out. Ahead for Seleski. Seleski broken up by Edestrand. DuPont lifts it over the head of everyone to the Boston backboard. Now it's Doak quickly out of the Boston end, up the left wing boards to center ice. For McNabb. McNabb shovels the backhander inside the flyer zone. DuPont goes to the far wing for Seleski. Can't move it out. Here's McNabb in close. Oh, what a save by Stevenson from 10 feet away. McNabb all alone. We've got 13-10 left here in the first period. There's still no score. We're still going to stay here as there is action in front of the net. And Doak already had a little go earlier with DuPont. Now is looking at Ross Lonsbury. And Doak has developed the Terry Harper kind of style. It's not intimidation, but aggravation. I compared him last game to, I think, to Jerry Hart. So with 13-10 remaining in the first period for the scoreless tie. We join action at the Garden with no score early in the first period. Seven minutes into the period. As out of the zone comes Gary Doak. Goes to the left wing for Wayne Cashman at center. He's inside the Flyers zone. Taken to the boards hard by Daly. Cashman wants to go back at him as he makes a menacing motion with his stick. Puck is lifted the length of the ice. This will be icing against the Flyers. Well, through the first seven minutes of the game, the Flyers have had trouble coming out of their own end, which set up Boston scoring plays, and the Bruins have had absolutely no trouble coming out of theirs. Bruins taking the play to us very well in the first part of this game right now, Gene. They're forechecking well, sending two men in. As you mentioned, they've had some breaks with the puck bouncing loose in our end for them. Uh, not on exactly giveaways, but maybe some loose plays where we didn't just make too sure, but that time McNabb was caught deep in our end was coming back out and all of a sudden there was a puck directly on his stick and he was all alone in front of the crease with Wayne Stevenson but stepped up with a great big save to keep us in this game. Schmott's back at 28 goals this season and a career high of 38 at Vancouver. Face off to the left of Stevenson. Clark on the draw with Rattel. 
No one has really established possession. Kelly lifts it out, but it's intercepted by Marcotte at center. He gives it away to Leach on the far wing. Leach loops back inside of his own zone, goes left side for Joe Watson. He lifts it ahead for Kelly, goes off the Boston backboard. Cheevers deflects it there for Mike Milbury. Puck gets by Watson, back to center ice. Tom Bladen covers that, gives it to Watson. He's taken down. Kelly on the loose puck at the Flyers line, challenged by Rattel. Loose puck intercepted by Boston. Brad Park has it. Sends it across, but Rattel already in the zone, forces the offside whistle. John Rattel, who played his hockey with Rod Gilbert and the Miners, came up to New York in the early 60s and appeared to be at the end of his career and was really uh, the giveaway, supposedly, here to Boston with the Rangers stealing Esposito. And he came on to play brilliantly last year and wound up this season with 94 points to lead the Bruins in scoring, 61 assists, and he's just two points away from tying his playoff career high of 16 points that last year with the Bruins. Okay, Bridgman centering Barber and Harvey Bennett right at the red line. Flyers control, intercepted off of Jimmy Watson by McNabb, and it to the, the Flyers backboard. DuPont quickly up to Bennett on the left wing, trying to send Bridgman away, intercepted by O'Reilly, rolls the backhander in, Wensink takes the rebound, he loses his stick as DuPont tries to move it out, he's bumped hard by O'Reilly, Wensink in there has DuPont sandwiched against the boards across the way, and we've got a faceoff coming up to the right of Wayne Stevenson. Flyers are going to have to dig just a little deeper with more intensity coming out of their own end. I think possibly the Boston Bruins might listen to Freddie Shiro's pregame talk as he said that he wanted to send two men in deep and have the third man in the slot. And so far, the Bruins have played that game to perfection in the early going of the first period here. Still no score. McNabb between O'Reilly and Wensink. Face off to the right of Stevenson. Bridgman against McNabb. And referee Ron Finn signals Neil Armstrong that DuPont and Wensink are riding in a bit too close on that outer edge. We get another quick whistle as we have another face-off circle violation. As soon as you have that, the referee who plays on the opposite side of the rink will go back in the corner where the face-off is held to get a better look. Bridgman against McNabb. Puck controlled by Milbury. Goes deep in the corner. Back passes, but it's picked up by Bridgman. Shovels it ahead for Jim Watson. He's broken up, but Bridgman, the trailer, carries it in. Cuts to the left wing. Rolls went in on Cheevers. Routine save on the rebound. Handled by Pete McNabb. Listed over the head of everyone. Back to the Flyers line as McNabb was taken heavily into the boards of the Boston end by Harvey Bennett. Barber starts out. He's checked uh, closely by O'Reilly. Almost uh, left the puck right in the slot for O'Reilly. Lead pass for Bridgman. He's tied up by Park and Milbury tracks it down in his own end. Off his own left wing board. Barber got a piece of it but couldn't handle it. Now it's Park out of his own end. Through center on the left wing. Cuts across the line. Drops it off for Wensink. Wensink. Throws it across in front. Picked up by O'Reilly on the right wing board. O'Reilly closing. Goes circles in the right wing corner. Intercepted by Bridgman for Barber. Barber will move it out. Can't do it. Winston gets a drive on Stevenson. He makes the save. And Jim Watson quickly ahead gets by everyone. This will be icing against the Flyers. Flyers have got to get something going at the other end because you just can't play no shoot hockey and intend to win a fourth game. Boston very hungry in our end zone, Gene. I've mentioned numerous times in our telecast and on the radio that two deep front where you don't want to get caught short is five feet inside your blue line or five feet outside the other team's blue line. That puck has got to get out, and right now that's where Boston's doing the most damage. They're keeping that puck in when we think we've got it out of our own end zone. They come up with it and keep it in deep. Okay, it's Shepard, Cashman, and Middleton for Boston. McLeese, Lonsbury, and Holmgren up front for the Flyers. Lonsbury deep along the near side. Lifts it ahead for McLeese. Joe keeps it in. McLeese reaches back for it. Tries to go back to Joe Watson, but Shepard jams it to the corner. Lonsbury taken to the corner by Middleton as they both try to free the puck. Down goes Lonsbury. Cashman tripped up. He's broken up, but it's Middleton with a puck. Tries to throw it out front. Blocked off at the post by Stevenson. Middleton still trying to move it out. He's taken to the far corner by Clayton. And we've got a delayed penalty coming up. And I believe it's going to be against the Flyers. And I believe it's going to be Bladen for holding. And we've got 10.04 left in the first period. A Boston power play as we pause for this. Four checking strength by Middleton forced Tommy Bladen into the Flyers. Fourth penalty of the game for holding. Boston's second power play coming up at 9.56. Bladen four minutes on the playoff year. You summed it up in a nutshell, G, when you said good four checking by Rick Middleton. Tommy just couldn't get a hold of him enough to pin him. And Middleton just kept that puck in play enough that Tommy had to take a penalty, hold him, so he couldn't break loose and walk in on Stevenson all alone. Face off at center ice. Clark against Rattel. Barber gets a piece of it. Back to Jim Watson. 
He lifts it down the left wing boards the length of the ice. Cheevers will set it up for Brad Parks. Both power play opportunities have been Boston power play opportunities. The Flyers haven't had a shot at it yet. Okay, it's Marcotte hitting Rattel the trailer out of the Boston zone to center ice. Drops it back off the park inside the flyer zone. Marcotte kicks it ahead. Here comes Rattel. Shot taken away by Clark. And now it's Marcotte with a loose puck. Challenged by Jim Watson. Smots back to the right point for Park. Halfway down the right wing boards. Smots back to Park at the right point. Through a screen. Two minutes in goes wide. And Stevenson got a piece of it. Face off will not be outside as the Flyers had hoped. It'll be in the circle to the left of Wayne Stevenson. Terry, in all due respect to the Boston forward checking that's been strong, uh, the Flyers have had on a half a dozen occasions clear-cut possession and have been unable to gun load. There's a chance right there with Clarkie coming back, and what a good defensive move Bobby Clark made on number 10, Jean Rattel right there, to get that. Rattel was all alone walking, just getting ready for a shot. Clarkie come back and just out-muscled Rattel off that puck. Coming into tonight's game, the Bruins three out of 17. They're now three out of 18 on power plays against the Flyers in this series. Back to Shep at the top of the slot. It's deflected wide of the backboard. And it's clear the length of the ice picked up by Shepard deep along the near side. Shepard moves it ahead to Marcotte on the left wing. Up ahead to Rattel. Good head manning play as Rattel closes. His shot deflected to the backboard. Shindrichuk. Can't move it out as it's kept in by Smart. Marcotte drops it back to Shepard at the line from left point. The drive hits the backboard. Would have gone through the net had it hit it as he really had that one labeled. Puck cleared out. And now we have Smarts and DuPont with a stick held high. And moving in very quickly, Bruce Hood. All right. There's an example right there where I said that Bobby Smarts and Moose DuPont in front of our net started right here. Moose gives him a shot. He gives it back one there. Smart just misses Moose's face with the blade of his stick as he takes a swipe at him. And right there, Don, you've seen it over the years, and I have seen Bobby Smart's one of the better stick men in the league. And by that, I mean by stick fighting. You know he's not going to drop his stick. There's no way he is. You and possibly this the other night that rarely does he ever drop his stick. And with Big Moose Dupont facing you, maybe discretion is a better part of valor. But anytime you use that stick, it doesn't take a whole lot of gumption to hold on a stick and start swinging with it at all. That's when the damage gets done. Correction on those power play figures. I was looking at the right. regular season, not uh, the playoffs. My correction. Right. It's slashing for DuPont and for Schmatz. So the Flyers pick up their fifth penalty, the Boston, the third, at 11 10. And with 46 seconds remaining on the blatant penalty, the Flyers now forced to defend three against four attackers. Face off at center ice outside the Flyers line. Shepard across to Park on the right. Lost control, but covering nicely was Greg Shepard. Taps it ahead to Rattel as they're short passes at center ice. Shepard checked from behind. Loose puck picked up by Kinderchuk, and he lifts it the length of the ice. Picked up by Brad Park in full flight. Out of his own zone on the left wing to center ice. Here comes the former Ranger defenseman. Drops it off for Shepard on the left point. Shepard started to fire, did fire finally. Daly got a piece of it. Challenges retired Russell behind the Flyers net, but Park is there with it. He's challenged by Daly. Daly broken up. Jim Watson has trouble as he's double teamed. Daly covering in the front of the net. Finally whistled down for face off deep in the Flyers zone. Flyers very solid on that, and in three ticks, Bladen will be out, and the Flyers will be back at even strength with Boston. 117 remaining on the slashing calls to Schmartz, and to the Flyers Dupont as Bladen up to the right of Dupont, ready to come back on ice. I think a good mention right now with 807 remaining in the period is Jimmy Watson, the fine play that he's had in this whole series. He is anticipating very well at both ends of the ice. Jimmy has stood up at center ice numerous times throughout this series and broke up sure two on ones by Boston. Plus, he's been getting back into our zone, Don. Freezing the puck, making good defensive maneuvers in our end zone. On the faceoff, back to the Flyers line. Milbury to Doak. His shot deflected wide by McNabb as out comes Bladen. Bladen uh, neutralizes McNabb and the loose puck is picked up by McLeish. McLeish out of his own zone. Cuts to the left wing. Hooked from behind and broken up by Pete McNabb. Now it's uh, Joe Watson with a loose puck. Holds it at the red line. Moves it ahead for, uh, for Lonsbury. Too far for him to reach his Milbury. Moves it back to center ice along the far wing. LaPointe to the near side for Joe Watson. Lifts it down the left wing boys. Cheevers will set it up for Milbury. Milbury starts right out on the near side of the Boston net. Ahead for McNabb. Wing to wing. Mark out across the Flyers line. Rolls it to the Flyers' backboard. Tapped to the far wing by Cheevers, but uh, by Stevenson, but right to McNabb. And his drive is gloved by Steph as out comes McLeish. 
Ahead to Rick LaPointe. He breaks with a long break. Through center ice. Inside the Boston zone. Rolls one in on Sheevers. Sheevers sweeps it behind the net to the near corner. Picked up by Doke. Doke starts out on his right wing. Long lead pass. Mark God knew if he touched it, he'd be offside. He would have been smart to touch it and get the offside call because it's coming back icing anyway. Teams have nine seconds remaining on the Flyers. DuPont and Boston Schmott's penalty. 6.59 remaining in a scoreless first period. And the Flyers getting only their second faceoff, Terry, in the Boston end. And they've only had two or three shots on Cheevers. One from Bridgman at the blue line, and then that little flip one in on Cheevers again. And they've had absolutely no offense continuing as they did Thursday night. Schmott's looking on from the penalty box. Bobby Clark checks his alignment as he... Uh has Barber directly behind him. He moves Jimmy Watson along the boards. He's got Bladen out by the line to guard against any Boston outbreak. Nine seconds left on the minors to Schmatz and DuPont face off to the right of Cheevers. Shepard against Clark to Barber. His drive. Getting a piece of it. The left pad of Cheevers. And a strand can't move out. Here's Barber again. A back hitter. Good skate save, Cheevers. Shepard over skate. Clark. Tries to throw it in front, but a great defensive move by Brad Park to break up the play as both teams are back at full strength. Here comes O'Reilly. O'Reilly to Shepard. He's double teamed and broken up. Cheevers for Clark at the side of the net around the near side. O'Reilly battles Jim Watson for it. Now picked up by Jonathan. He's upended by Clark. Clark quickly moves it ahead for Leach. Leach wing to wing along the near side. Jim Watson broken up by O'Reilly. Now picked up by Barber. Barber trying to go outside of Park. Throws it in. Sheevers kicks it out. Leaves the back at her. He's bumped by Ennis Grant. And it's tied up to the Boston backboard behind Sheevers to the near side for faceoff. 6-12 left in the first period. Still no score. Back on there, Jerry Cheevers, a good save on Billy Barber. Billy had to go to his backhand. Got good wood on it. Cheevers just stuck his right skate out and got a piece, but to kick it away on Billy Barber. Okay, Holmgren against Shepard to the right of Cheevers. Controlled by Holmgren himself. Goes uh, to the right wing boards. Gets by Wensink. Milbury battles. Brisbane against the backboard. In to help out is McNabb, and he's up for the most puck. Starts out on the right wing. Cuts to the middle as he hits center ice. McNabb with those long strides. Just flips it to the, board, the Flyers' right wing corner. O'Reilly takes Bennett down. Play continues in the Flyers' zone. McNabb trying to dig it loose. He's crunched by Holmgren. Wensink takes a check from Daly. Joe Watson digs it out from the eye of the net. Ahead for Bennett on the left wing. To Brigman. He's at center ice. Broken up by Rick Smith. Who looks the back end of back into the Flyers' zone. Now it's Joe Watson. Watson goes right side for Daly. Intercepted by Wensink. Wensink closes his drive wide. Carrums to the near side. Kept in by Rick Smith. O'Reilly bumped by Bridgman. Puck back behind the Flyers' net. Daly lifts it over the head of Bruce Hood. Put back into that far corner by Milbury. Centering pass for McNabb. Backhand is stopped by Stevenson as barreling in is John Wensink. And we got a pile up around the Flyers' crease. Another chance by the Bruins. Supported by Wayne Stevenson, as we mentioned numerous times, Boston is buzzing in there. They got three men in deep on that play right there, and we just couldn't get our stick on the puck to move it out of there. And right now, you must have some kind of a record for number of players in a goal crease, including Wayne Stevenson, the goaltender. All three Bruin players were caught in deep, but still we couldn't get that puck out. And they just keep knocking in Wayne Stevenson's door, and he just keeps standing there, knocking him aside. So hopefully, Steph will stand there with 5.08 remaining in the first period. Still no score in the game. Flyers have now gone 166 minutes and 18 seconds with one power play. That's almost uh, equivalent of equivalency of three games. 166-18 with one power play. Uh, the face off to the right of Stevenson. Bladen trying to move it out. Can't do it. Middleton checked from behind, and now the puck comes to center ice. Comes loose to the left wing boys where Kinderchuk trying to roll it by Middleton. One-handed inside the Boston line. Doak checked into the boards by DuPont, and DuPont lifts it around the Boston boards. Sheevers puts it to the far wing for Cashman. Bladen gets inside Cashman. Edderstrand lets the puck come loose, picked up by Doak. Goes behind his net. Up on the right wing for Middleton. Lifts it ahead for Shepard. He's offside. They allow it. They allow it. That's the second time in this period that there's been a two-line pass, and Boston got away with both of them. Stevenson finally tying it up in another crease scramble at the Flyers' end. On that... On that break, I was pointing to Terry that Cashman was alone on the left wing. Number 19 for them, Greg Shepard, 
Once I pass that puck across to Steph, oh, Kinderchuk got just a piece on it, but Wayne Stevenson did not take his eye off it, even though everybody else thought the play was dead. Cashman breaks in on him, flips it up high. Steph gets it. The rebound comes and oh, missed it. Right there, Cashman got a second chance to try and flip it over Steph. Couldn't get Goodwood on it. Steph smothered on that one. So a two-on-one between Cashman and Shepard on old Kindrichuk. And Wayne Stevenson once again was equal to the task. Bladen, who went into the corner, got up and then tripped. And that allowed Cashman to come uh, up uncontested on the left side. Face off as play will resume is to the left of Stevenson. Rattel against Clark. As uh, Schmatz wants a new stick. He gets it from trainer Dan Kenny across the way. It'll be Rattel, Marcotte, and Schmatz against Clark, Barber, and Reg Leach. DuPont and Joe Watson defenseman for the Flyers. Brad Park and Rick Smith for Boston. On the faceoff. Back to Schmatz. Pulls the trigger. Blocked wide, and Clark moves it ahead. Barber has to cut deeper as Schmatz is on him. Circles along uh, the near side. Now goes behind his own net. To DuPont, who reverses it near side for Joe Watson. Schmatz gets a piece of it as the Flyers continue to have their problems getting it out. Kept in by Park. His drive and a good skate save as Stevenson just got the tip of his skate on that drive to deflect it to the backboard. Now on the far wing, Clark kicks the puck loose. DuPont kicks it further toward the blue line. Now kicks it to center ice as he lost his stick, but Boston gets it right back. Brad Park challenged by Barber. He slips and falls. Here comes Rick Smith. Flips one in wide of Stevenson. He gets the glove on it. Drops it out for Joe Watson. Reverse pass near side. The left wing for Barber. And he flips it to center ice. Rick Smith chases it down at his own line. Now it's Bill Barber. Barber runs into his own man and Leach takes him down. Now Leach gets the puck. He's broken up. Here comes Marcotte. The shot. Oh, to save. Follow up shot. Another one. His puck in front. His puck still. And it's been a miracle right there, Terry. I'm sitting here really smiling, Terry. It's unbelievable that that puck didn't go in. Tommy Bladen, big count daily, and Wayne Stevenson, Boston had every chance in the world to put that in. Just couldn't get it down. It bounced around. There's one by Stevenson. That one stopped by Daly, and Stevenson come across. Right there is Tommy Bladen, Reggie Leach. <laughs> Another one by Ross Lonsbury. Right there was a third one by Tommy Bladen when John Rattel had the whole net to throw it in on a backhand, and Tommy Bladen got his stick. It starts right here with Wayne Stevenson kicking it out to Rattel. Count Daly comes across and kicks that away. Right there where Tommy Bladen and Clarky are fighting for it in there. Billy Barber coming through. The count. And I don't know how many times you counted, Don, they had a chance to put it in the open net, and a stick got in the way to stop it. At least five. At what? least five. One of two things. Either that's prophetic, or it might be a, a good luck omen. Okay, face off to the left of Stevenson as he's had all the work in this period. We got a stoppage, apparently an equipment problem with Wayne Stevenson. Tomorrow morning when you get up, turn to WCAU Radio News 1210. 1210 will get you up and keep you up in everything. You, sports, weather, traffic, business. It's what you need to know when you need to know it. WCAU Radio News 1210, your total news and information station. Okay, puck is dropped into the corner. Jim Watson, challenged by Terry O'Reilly, now drops it off for Bob Daly, kept in by Doak as they battle for it right down below us. McLeish gets a stick on it. Terry O'Reilly drives off the mark, but Stevenson gloves it. Drops it off for Jim Watson, winds around to Holmgren. He can't move it out. Blocked off by Milbury. Now it's McLeish with the puck, goes behind his own net. Most of the action in this period has been in the flyer zone. Doak goes down as he runs into Lonsbury. Here comes Holmgren. Holmgren going against Bilbrey, trying to go around him, goes to the left wing corner, back to Jim Watson. Watson looks, throw a screen wide on the short side. Daly's going to get a drive. In front, McLeish, backhand right into the midsection of Chambers, a blind shot, and he had the whole net to shoot at. How about that? 2.40 left in the period, no score. We call it good for the gooses, good for the gander on that play, Gene. Ricky McLeish had the whole open net. Couldn't couldn't get it on his forehand. Cheevers is down and out of the net to the left-hand side of the net. Ricky got it on the backhand, whirled around blindly, had the whole net to put it into, and shot it right into the midsection of Cheevers, laying right flat on the ice. Face-off comes back to Joe Watson, gets a stick on it, but couldn't shoot it. Now it's McNabb ahead to cast from right wing. Sammy Middleton across, kick save off the right side of Stevenson. To the right wing board, Selesky trying to move it out, kept in by Rick Smith. Intercepted by Joe Watson off his left wing boards. Gets by Bridgman to center ice. Clark dumps it back in again. Intercepted by Bladen. He can't go anywhere. 
Trying to get a stick on the puck. He inadvertently clonked uh, Park with it. And Park clonks him right back. Now it's Celeski setting up behind his own net. To the left side for Joe Watson. Ahead for Bridgman as he had Park tied up. Puck rolls back into the Boston zone. Just about two minutes left in the period as we have an offside flyers. Puck uh, in, out, and back in again with Kendrick Chuck still in the zone. Minds me of the old days here, Terry. Here we go again. Gene Bakken used to have a royal battle every time into this building. This one almost reminds you of the Alamo. Both clubs, no quarter asked, none given whatsoever. And both teams taking their shots, giving their shots, and playing both ends of the ice. And both goaltenders coming up big on some key saves. Still no score in this game with two minutes remaining in the first period. Clark against Rattel outside the Boston line on the Flyers' right wing. Kelly battles, but Schmott's had him uh, tied up. Puck uh, flipped into the Flyers' zone along the Boston right wing. DuPont uh, can't move it out. Clark does, but puts it right on the stick of Milbury. To Marcott off the far wing. Now Kelly gets a stick on it inside the Boston zone. Squares it, but not out. Kept in by DuPont. Kelly has to pick up his stick. Takes a bump from Milbury. Kelly, uh, no, Milbury loses the glove. Leeds trying to dig it loose. That's all in the Boston right wing corner. Now goes behind the net. Picked up by Gary Doak along the Boston right wing. Ahead for Rattel. To Marcotte. Left wing. Has to reach back for it. Centering pass in the slot. Spots overskated it. Clark doesn't have his stick. So has to block it. Down goes Jim Watson. Lifts it but not out. Leach controls. He's broken up. Clark gets it to center ice. Now it's Clark taking a flip ahead for Leach. Trying to cut inside. He's held by Milbury. And the puck is cleared back to center ice. DuPont hits the linesman with it. Kelly climbs the back of Milbury. Trying to get along the boards. And the puck goes to the Boston backboard. Now it's up to Rattel. To center ice on the right wing to Schmatz. Schmatz inside the Flyers line. Drive stopped by Stevenson. Shoveled to the backboards for Joe Watson. 40 seconds left in the period. Kelly can't clear it out. Park from the right point. Off the stick of Rattel wide. Marcotte tries to throw it in front. Rattel gets a stick on it. Puck behind the flyer net. Now on the flyer's left wing, Kelly golfs at it. Can't move it out. Now Kelly tries to skate it out. He can't do it. Everywhere you see the puck, you see at least one Bruin. Now it's Brad Park at center ice. 12 seconds left in the period. Cashman just spots at the Flyers line, rolls it to the Flyers backboard. Joe Watson on it. To Lonfrey on the left wing. Across to Daly. Daly can't get by Shepard. Kept in by Cashman, but time runs out here in the first period with the score. The Flyers nothing and Boston nothing. Rattel, Schmatz, and Marcotte out with Doak and Milbury. Flyers go Leach and Kelly surrounded. Browning Clark along with Daly and Jimmy Watson. Cheever's right and Stevenson left. And pointed out, Terry, that the Flyers have gone 134 minutes, 44 seconds without an even strength goal. And in that span, they've just scored once the power play goal here on Thursday. On the draw, the Flyers ice it, touched up by Doak. Place off deep in the zone left alongside Wayne Stevenson. We're thumbing through the uh, the Bruins fact book, and we will come up with it uh, eventually here. As far as home and away, Boston has always been a fairly strong home team, but in some years, like 68-69, uh, they only lost three games the whole season at home. And it's that type of play that makes this team so tough in this rink. Clark against Rattel to Stevenson's right. Rattel loses the draw to Daly alongside Stevenson, winds it up on the left wing to Kelly. He and uh, Doak collide. They slash at one another as the puck rolls free to Milbury in the Boston zone. Cuts to the near wing, flips up ice to Rattel, and lets it go the rest of the way into the flyer zone, right corner behind Stevenson. Jimmy Watson around to Kelly, loses it to the point. Doak, Doak back around the right wing boards, curls behind Stevenson, played by Daly, deflected by Schwartz up to Leach, and Leach lets it go the rest of the length of the way. And if Doak gets there first, then he does. We have another icing whistle by Neil Armstrong. And as recently, Terry, as 1973-74, Boston lost only four games on this ice during regular season play. Huh. That's tough. Remember a lot of years, Don, coming this, into this building and just hoping and wishing that maybe they could in here, steal a point, and get out. As you mentioned, the fans have a lot to do with in here. They've been steeped in hockey. Tradition-wise, they hate to lose in this building and let their own players know that also. So as you mentioned, over the years, the Bruins have been a tough, tough club in this building. The place Holmgren-Lonsbury as Dornhofer is out. 
uh, Holmgren up at center ice over skates, gets it through at the Bruin line, can't control it, rolls it alongside Sievers as Holmgren slowed down by Rick Smith. Fourth checking, McLeish takes it away from Park, centering. Holmgren is bumped off the puck by Shepard up to Cashman. Lost to Holmgren alongside the goal to McLeish. The Holmgren, his shot blocked by Shepard. Centering pass to Lundbury, a short side save by Sievers. It's lifted in front, cleared away by Sievers. McLeish wants to get it back to Blayton at the point, and it's Cashman who this time ices it. And racing after it is Middleton, but cutting across in front of us, Joe Watson of Icing Bruins. Cashman realizes that Flyers' pressure was beginning them out there. Good backhand by Lonsbury, saves short side by Cheevers, and uh, almost uh, setting it up from McLeish back to the point when Cashman iced it. Good puck maneuvering inside the Bruins zone between Ross Lonsbury, Ricky McLeish, and Paul Holmgren. Right there, Cheevers is down, sprawling, trying to swim in that frozen stuff, and there's just no way you can possibly do it. Ross just couldn't quite get the handle on to flip it over Cheevers, and then, as you said, Cashman very alertly just iced the puck out of harm's way to take the face off to the left of Cheevers. All right. To Hendrichuk tied up Barber. Barber bumped off by Smith. They wrap one another up. Park around his own right wing board to O'Reilly. Court check by DuPont. It centers in a short side shot by Zaleski. Good save, Cheevers. And Don, we just want to make the quick observation of a change. Last year, Rick Smith in another league. So was Cheevers. Uh, Rattel and Park were with New York and McNabb with his Buffalo, and here they are a year later leading the Bruins to a possible finals berth. Well, Milbury, according to the Bruins, seems to be the biggest difference. Right off the draw, a quick backhander by Kinrichuk, and Cheevers makes his best save of the night. And Jerry Cheevers earning his pay early in the second period right there. A good glove save off the stick of Oris Kinrichuk right from the faceoff. And just earlier before that, he robbed Don Seleski, who come around the net and tried to stuff one in from a pass from Moose DuPont. So Cheevers is earning his money early in the second period. All right, McNabb up the slot from O'Reilly. He's got O'Reilly on his right, dumps it in the corner left of Stevenson. DuPont in there with O'Reilly. DuPont quickly up to Kindrachuk. Oh, looks down the left wing boards and plays to Barber. He comes with Seleski, breaking for the net. Barber in the drive! And Cheevers out! Barber tries to center with Cheevers out. And can as it was wrapped up behind by Smith, by Park, and we get a standard of play. And again, you wish you'd feed off to the open wing with Cheevers well out of the net. They tried on that one, Gene. A good play by Don Seleski and Billy Barber. We mentioned before the game started that we have to make it two on ones with Cheever coming out like he does in challenge. And right there, Don Seleski comes from a long ways behind with Billy Barber to get a two on one. Billy Barber elects to take the shot. Cheever gets a piece of it, but he also gets enough to deflect it into the corner. And with Don Seleski parked out in front of the net, waiting for any kind of a pass at all, Billy just couldn't get enough stick on that puck to get it out to the bird with number eight McNabb watching him. So we got to do a little more of that, create two-on-ones and make Cheevers come out and get it to the off man. With Tal Schmott and Marcotte, they clear out the center. The Flyers have Bridgman on with Bo uh, Harvey Bennett and Kimberchuk. They flip it in on Cheevers, but uh, Bridgman was just inside the Boston blue line when he received that pass offside. Milbury back with Dope Daly with Jimmy Watson. You know, you go back to last year, Gene, Cheevers was, uh, was injured and... Uh, that has to be a big difference. Uh, the uh, arrival of Milbury and Doak and Rattel and Park with a whole year of Cherry system under their belts. All right, Flyers dump it down behind Cheevers. No score, 2 10 gone, second period. Buck on the near side. Marcotte will try to get it up ice to Rattel as Daly committed. And it's broken up nicely by Jimmy Watson. Deflects the length of the ice to Stevenson's right. Played around the near side by Bridgman up to Harvey Bennett. He fails to clear. Watson the slot shot. Stevenson grabs, drops off to his left, and plays up to Bridgman. Tries to get it away to Kendrick chuck at center ice hit by the stick of smarts and cleared to the near side at center where marcotte touches up high stick call stoppage of play 17 28 in any second period there is no score all right rick smith at center with park phil rattel smarts marcotte and the flyers go bladen with jimmy Wa joe watch right rattel in the right wing corner centering pass right in front of and he was there and had stevenson going the wrong way as Rattel again with a quick move in the corner. Joe Watson up ice, rolls it in on Cheevers, leech after it. Cheevers steers it to the near side to Marcotte. Four check by Clark, controls the puck though, behind his net. Clark really working on it, but Marcotte still up on the far wing. Joe Watson over skates. Marcotte still can't get it out and does to Rattel at center. Now he's got Clark breaking on the right wing over the line. A drive, and Stevenson has it on his pass. Clears it out past Clark along the far side. Now Joe Watson is tied up by Rattel. Comes to the side of the net, right around looking for a stuffer. Blocked out to the near side to Leach. And Leach shoves it past Rick Smith deep into the Boston zone. Taken by Spots in front of his own goal. Up in the far wing to Rattel. Just couldn't reach it. Played back into the Boston zone from the Flyers' blue line by LaPointe. Caught by Bobby Kelly coming out offside. 
Faceoff will be just outside the uh, Flyers line as uh, action is uh, picked up here in the middle period at both ends of the ice. And a uh, couple of better opportunities for the Flyers, but alert Boston uh, defense and good back checking by their forwards have thwarted the Flyers thus far. Into the zone, the point out there with Dupont, and they've got Holmgren with McLeish and Lonsbury. The Bruins take it away. Shepard centering Wintzik and Terry O'Reilly up to Lonsbury. Taken by O'Reilly in the right wing corner behind the net. There's McLeish coming around the near side, winding for Dupont. Court checked by Milbury, who keeps it in, but McLeish takes the loose puck up on his own right wing. Hawked by Shepard, rolls through looking for Lonsbury on the right side. It's cleared into center ice off the stick of dope, where Lonsbury controls it again. Through to McLeish at the Bruin line, up the middle, surrounded by four Bruins. Bangs it off the left wing board, down behind Cheevers. Tries to clear it past Holmgren, who deflects it to Cheevers' left, where Milbury starts up on the Shepard stick at center ice. Rolling through for Wensick, two on two with O'Reilly. Stop pass to Shepard, but he drags it in late for the offside. Holmgren uh, hitting a few bodies along the way, trying to get things stirred up. Word out of the uh, Boston camp on John Wensick. He's got a history, believe it or not, Terry, of a biter. By that, I mean when he gets involved in a fracas, it's not uncommon for Mr. Wensink to clamp his teeth into a bit of enemy flesh. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that with a and, and And the word is that anyone who is on the receiving end should probably go and get a rabies shot. <laughs> Terry, I'm talking to you. I'm afraid to touch that one, John. <laughs> All right, Jimmy Watson through to Kindrichuk off the skate, still at the flyer line, circles away from Park and Casman in his own zone, far wing. Tries to get past McNabb, who breaks the play up, slaps it into the flyer zone. Caston racing in the corner left of Stevenson. Jimmy Hudson, they erase one another. In there's Jonathan with Kendra Chuck. And Bruce Hood lets them go on as McNabb laying off the pack of four players behind Stevenson looking for the loose puck to come out. And then Caston throws a punch to Jimmy Watson. Came up with a uh, backhand uh, forearm that caught Jimmy across uh, the chin. And uh, Jimmy, understandably, retaliated as Cashman is playing his role of the Intimidator. His billing is just about due for him to break out one of those cheap shots, which he just gives Jimmy Watson right there. Whistle it gone, play broke up. And as you know, Jimmy not a cheap shot artist at all, but Cashman labeled him with an elbow coming off. And right now they're facing off against each other on this faceoff. Kendra Chuck against McNabb, who's out with Cashman and Jonathan Seleski and Barber for the Flyers in front of the net. Barber takes it behind Stevenson, sets up. The Bruins, every man up, deep in the zone, and Barber tries to clear out. Kept in by Park at the right circle, in front, and shot it! Oh, it's a step by by Jonathan, as Stevenson came out to disrupt that play. Now Zaleski, up along the near side, chopped down again by Jonathan. Up along the near side, finally cleared the center. Barber tripped up by Caston. Back comes Park with McNabb on his right over the line. He'll get a quick shot in on Stevenson, lays at his feet off the rebound. He falls out in front as Daly took Jonathan out of the play. Even though Terry isn't talking to me, I'll, uh, I'll pass on a remark after we come back from this break. 14.57 to go in the period. Still no score. A whole new row of super boxes directly up behind us in the third deck is the reason why uh, you don't hear some of the cat calls you once heard over the years from Boston Garden. I mentioned earlier, Don, that this, the uh, crowd here may be a little more sophisticated than in the past years, and you mentioned to me that they had taken out a whole swath of the gallery gods, which had caused most of the troubles over the past years. No cat calls now. They're wealthy up there. <laughs> Panther comments. All right, we got a false draw. Rattel out now with Jonathan and Schmatz. Buck loose in front. Rattel tries to get it to Schmatz. His shot deflected behind by Joe Watson. Trying to center is Jonathan. He's knocked down behind the net as he had Clark covered the puck. And we get another stoppage as the Bruins continue to press early in the second period in a scoreless game. You know, you look at the, uh, the penalty situation between these two clubs and coming into uh, tonight's game, uh, the penalty average uh, for both teams is, I believe, around 18 minutes, which has got to be exceedingly low for both of these clubs. We're in the playoffs, Don, as we well know, against our series with Toronto. Penalties can hurt you tremendously, and right now we'd like to stay away from them, especially in this building. Joe Watson out with Bladen, and they have Harvey Bennett with Leach and Clark. It's still Marcotte Schmartz. Puck cleared up past Marcotte by Joe Watson in the center. Milbury waits for his line to clear. He has to wait a long time. Finally gets it in behind Stevenson. Joe Watson there behind the net left side. Clears it through to the Boston defense at center ice. No cold. Challenged by Clark. Rink wide pass left side to Milbury. Down it goes into the flyer zone. Skips past Stevenson. Schmartz in the right wing corner right out in front. And it was kept away by Rattel from Marcotte, both of whom were there. 
Here comes Harvey Bennett away on the left wing at center ice, surrounded by Broome. And we're going to have a check against Milbury for charging Harvey Bennett. And after 139 minutes and 55 seconds, the Flyers get a power play. And Milbury ended up on the short end. We've got 14-11 left in the middle period. There's no score. Mike Milbury in the box for charging uh, Harvey Bennett and on the series 27 minutes for the rookie defenseman from Colgate University. Flyers are two for seven against the Bruins on the faceoff. That's the example right there, Don, where you said he was on the receiving end of that charge as Harvey Bennett knocked him flying and Milbury also took two minutes for getting knocked on his rear end on that frozen stuff. Seven for 25 in the playoffs, two for seven against the Bruins. They've got Lonsbury out with McLeish and Clark, Barber and Daly over the line on the near side. Daly pushes it past Rick Smith, rolls behind Fevers, quickly around the far side, and Shepard is kept in by Barber. Now trying to get it away, and doing so is Rick Smith back to the Flyers line for Bar uh, Clark, up to Daly. Daly through to Barber over the line to McLeish. Dumps it past Hood, down behind Cheevers, on the ledge, behind the Boston goal. Rolls to Park. Park knocks down uh, Greg Shepard, but it's Rick Smith again. Clearing it up ice to flex the Forbes. One on one against Bob Daly. Daly takes it away, loses it to Forbes. And Forbes will try to kill time now. He's rubbed up by Billy Barber at center ice. Can't control the puck as Dope pokes it back to Clark. Fires rink wide pass stolen from Clark by Dave Forbes. Forbes to Shepard. They'll play keep away now. As they go ring around the rosy at center ice with a minute ten left, back to Goat, and Goat will let it go down the ice. So the Flyers have had a minute so far in the power play with nary a shot. Now Billy Barber up. Who at the Bruin line? He's got McLeish with him. Pass broken up. Back to Barber on the near side. Holds at the point. Rink wide pass looking for Daly. Wide of the net. Played into the far corner to Lonsbury. Right out in front. Clark a shot. And Chambers with a good save on a feed from Lonsbury and a shot by Clark. Interesting statistic if uh, you want to go to statistics in play thus far between these two clubs three games penalty killing percentage the Flyers actually have a better percentage than do Boston 66.7 for the Bruins 72.5 for the Flyers and the Flyers also have a better power play scoring percentage and they need one right here now Terry with 46 seconds remaining on the penalty to Mike Milbury. Despite their tremendous defense, the Bruins have been scored 11 out of 33 on the power play. Right in front, is shot by Bridgman, another rebound is oh. wide. And there was a chance, it comes out in front again to Kindrachuk. Ties up Shepard, and here comes Rick Smith away to Marcotte. Two on two against Dupont. Marcotte, 50 footer, and it was right on the short side corner, and Stevenson kicked it to the second deck in the far corner with 27 seconds left on the Mike Milbury penalty. I'll tell you, Terry, I grew up in this building watching hockey since 1939. I've never seen a shot go in that corner of the second deck. And right there, Jerry Cheever just robbed Mel Bridgman close in. Mel got a backhand, kicks his own rebound, and just come out on a stick, but the puck was just bouncing wide of the net when Mel had Cheever's out of the net, was behind him with the puck, but put it wide off the backboards and out again. All right, 25 left on the penalty. We've got 12.34 remaining in the second period. No score in the game. Leach. Now swings out to the right side of his net. Gets past Marcotte up the Philadelphia line. Right up the middle with Bridgman on his left. Flips it down behind Cheevers. Sets the puck up away from Kendra Chuck and he'll ice it himself if he gets the chance. And Cheevers, again, a dominating factor in control of the puck as the penalty is ended. Just as the puck crosses over the goal line. Bruins keeping it in. DuPont chased by Park. will try to lift it out. Kept in by McNabb. McNabb rolls it down into the right wing corner to O'Reilly. Taken away by Bladen, who's rubbed out on a good check. O'Reilly tries to center. Blocked off Bruins point man. There's Goat with a screenshot. Marvelous save through the mass of humanity by Stevenson. And Tommy Bladen does the Borea sounding to flip it down the ice. And chasing it is Goat as the Flyers make a change, bringing out Rick LaPointe and Jimmy Watson. Kelly out there with Seleski and Holmgren. Now Pete McNabb out with... Uh, uh, Marcotte at center ice. Milbury to the flyer line up the middle. Rolls it into the corner. Bounces down behind Stevenson. Bob Kelly. Blocked out by Milbury. Rick LaPointe tries to shove it out. Blocked back to Bob Kelly. Kelly on the near side is elbowed by Milbury. Puck loose in front of shot over the top of the net by McNabb as that four checking set up a great chance by McNabb. Now the Flyers ice it as the Bruins are taking a run and digging into Philadelphia. Milbury touches up and play is called. Here we go right now with Paul Holmgren and Terry O'Reilly, who wouldn't let go of each other, down in the far corner to the left of Wayne Stevenson. No punches thrown, just two big, solid men holding on to each other, rusting each other to the ice. 
and getting up slowly, but neither one threw a punch, no damage done. Just testing their strength against each other to let them know who was the strongest. We have 11-10 remaining in the second period with a scoreless tie. I've got to feel that Holmgren and O'Reilly have too much respect for each other to start anything unless they feel they have the upper hand. Here's that check that Paul, uh, Bob Kelly threw on Milbury, and that's a combination of a headlock and a flying mare in wrestling talk. Right there is O'Reilly in the corner mucking it up with some of our players, and the Hounds still just rotating a pinball out there, so good heavy hitting, good action out there, and a nothing-nothing game. Well, the riot squad remains out. O'Reilly and Wensick centered by McNabb, and Kelly and Seleski centered by Holmgren with Blayton and Joe Watson. And Darrell Edestrand seeing his first action of the series, got a shift from the first period, is back there now with Brad Park. There's Don Cherry can gamble. Face off, taken off by Zaleski, breaks out with Holmgren, who's being hooked by Wensick, but comes to the Bruin line, through to Holmgren, down to the right wing corner. Holes is knocked down, and Wensick tries to come out, taken by Zaleski, right in front, tipped to Holmgren. It goes to Kelly, a slap shot, right through the crease wide. The Holmgren at the point, he fans, and it's a breakaway for Wensick. He'll go in alone, a drive! Beautiful save. Oh, over skating. Here comes O'Reilly. His shot is blocked from the slot. Marvelous action up and down. As out comes Joe Watson with Zaleski. Two on three. Zaleski over the line. Block shot. O'Reilly up on the far side. Couldn't handle McNabb's pass, but here comes Park. Going against McLeish, who skates, stops it at center ice. Now McNabb waits. Through for O'Reilly. Passed him to Joe Watson. Offside is Boston. And we're almost at the halfway point of regulation, and there is no score. Hey, don't forget, if you haven't already done so, pick up your copy of the all-new 10th Anniversary Flyers edition of the yearbook. Some uh, copies still available. The nostalgia section we've talked about, loaded with pictures of the Flyers' early years. Your price, $2 at the Spectrum. For mail order, send $2.50 to Champion Publications, Box 2429, Philadelphia 19147. Cashman and the Flyers, right wing, a corner in front. Shepard goes behind a centering pass, shot wide. By out in front again it comes. There's Dope, 30 footer, block. Goes behind the net, Shepard off the side of the net, looking for Cashman at Middleton. And Stevenson covered to hang on and keep this game scoreless. Talking about earning your money, Stevenson is earning a whole year's salary right here tonight. Fort Wayne standing up to the pressure of Middleton, Shepard, and Cashman buzzing around there, moving that puck around, kicking it out, flopping, doing anything he has to, to keep our team in the game right there. Harvey Bennett flying through to take him out. Middleton making the action on the net, and Big Count Daly trying to move him out. So good pressure by Boston, good defense by Wayne Stevenson. LaPointe and DuPont, McLeish, Lonsbury, and Holmgren. Shepard, Cashman, and Middleton with Doak and Rick Smith. Now Lonsbury on the far side flips. Doak keeps it in. That's been the story all night. Now DuPont will try to clear it out to Lonsbury. Stopped once, stopped the second time, and the Bruins keep it in. Their forechecking has been almost flawless all night and really kept the Flyers pinned in. LaPointe out to the right side. Clears right up the slot. Blocked by Rick Smith at the line. Tries to dump it in on the net. Rolls to the near side off the Flyers' defense. And finally LaPointe away to Holmgren at center ice. McLeish avoids Rick Smith's check. As the Bruins own the puck again. Now Shepard jammed up and rolls it to the flyer line. It skips past LaPointe. Deep in the flyer zone to the right of Stevenson. LaPointe around the far side. It skips to the point. Brad Park in with a screenshot. Wide to the long side. Back to the near point. Rick Smith right in front. Middleton fans. Gets another chance. Let's it go. Deflected wide. Behind the net. Cashman with Rattel. Cashman looks to center. Bounce back to Rattel behind the net. He's got Middleton out in front. There's a shot. Rattel scores! Well, you had to know, Terry, that it was going to come sooner or later. You can't put that much pressure on any team, on any goaltender, without sooner or later one of those shots finding its way in. And John Rattel, on a very heady play, started to play himself from the corner, passed it out. The pass was stopped almost or knocked down barely. Rattel just kept following out from the left hand of Wayne Stevenson, picked up the rebound himself, and just shot it in the short side of Wayne Stevenson, the glove side. Rattel is in the corner, makes the play out. Steph stops it, gets it himself, but Rattel just follows right on through, gets the puck and just wrist shots it. Steph gets a piece of with his pad, but it just continues on up over his pad right there. And Rattel, as I mentioned, started that play himself, came out from the corner, picked up the rebound and just shot it to the short side, hit his pad up over Wayne's glove hand and gives Boston a 1-0 lead in this game. And for Rattel, his fifth series goal and the Boston Bruins lead at 1-0. Rattel is now 1.5, his career high in the playoffs. He has 15. As the Flyers know, they've got to come uphill again. Into the Flyers' zone. 
Jimmy, Joe Watson with Bladen up to Kelly at center. To Clark at the flyer line. Rink wide behind Leach. Over the line. He's in. Shot wide. As play was onside, and he got the bouncing puck and didn't get an accurate play in on the goaltender. Brad Park out with Milbury. Crosses near side. Stolen by Leach. Short side shot. Clark was there and couldn't reach the Blazer through the crease. Up ice to Marcotte. Comes with Rattel. Rattel over the line. Right wing. Holes. Looks through for Marcotte. Deflected away to the near side. Marcotte goes back behind the net. Far corner. In there is Schmartz with Joe Watson. Joe drops it back to Kelly. Kelly tied up by Rattel. Tries to kick it free behind the net. Right out to the side where Clark up on his left wing at center with eight and a half minutes left. Second period. one nothing Boston. Clark over the line. Throw to Leach. Skips past the stick to Bladen. Bladen tries a shot. The diving body of Marcotte breaks it up. Kelly rubbed out by Milbury. Rattel behind the net. His shot and pass out hits Kelly. Tries a stuffer. Comes out in front off Cheevers to Schmartz. Schmartz now off to the side of the Boston net. Goes around the boards far side. Joe Watson will try to keep it in. Pass Marcotte. Does behind the net. As Bilberry has a hole at Clark's stick. Seleski right out in front. It deflects past Barber. Along the goal line right side. Barber tries to dump it in. Black tries again. Good save. Cheevers. Clark with a drive. With a bouncing puck. Seleski. And it goes behind the net. As Goat really clobbered Seleski. Now the puck comes up. Through the center ice. To Schmartz. To Marcotte. At center ice, Schmartz with it, bounces it in on Stevenson as the Bruins make a line change. Good heat by the Flyers as Barber taps it up to Kinderchuk through to Zaleski on the near side. Broken away from him. Up, Rick Smith trips Kinderchuk, and we're going to have a Bruin penalty at 12.29. 7.31 remaining second period, one to nothing Boston. Rick Smith goes off for tripping Kinderchuk at 12.29 and on the series for the Boston defenseman. Well, he hasn't had too many penalty minutes uh, trying to pick it up. It's uh, only eight on the series. But penalties now, uh, Terry, are even, and power plays are even at two apiece. You can use a goal right now, Don. Nice play by old Kindertuck at center ice to make his move around Rick Smith. And Rick Smith, as you often will do when a man gets by you, a natural reflex to stick that stick out and try and get any piece of him. And Rick Smith did just jammed between all his legs, tripped him up. So as you said, we get a penalty, or they get a penalty, rather. We get the power play chance to tie this game up. All right, McLeish with Barber and Leach, and they've got Clark back at the point with Daly. Now Brad Clark comes out for Doak. On with Milbury, Shepard, and Forbes. Flyers now two for nine against the Bruins on the playoffs. McLeish along the right side, hooked by Shepard. Around behind Cheevers, lost to Barber. Barber out in front, deflects to Bob Daly, goes on the forehand. Shot tipped wide by Leach, and he was there. Cleared up along the near side. Daly being worked over by Shepard. Barber tries to protect the near boards and does as Milbury comes in to help Shepard tie up Daly. Face off the Bruins zone left of Cheevers. Terry, let's be honest. I don't think I've seen a series that there's been so much holding, interference, and hooking that has not been called. That's the close in work involved in this game, Don. As you mentioned, this whole series has been done by it. Both teams doing their share of it, but a past master at it, as I said earlier, is... Uh, Gary Doak and Mike Milbury, another team, not crying poor mouth or anything, but they've got it down to a, an, an art. But right there, Big Count Daly was doing his share, but he had almost a man in each arm and one stick. The stick loose, keeping that puck in. A good defensive play to keep the puck in. Well, we, ha Count we, we had a bat at Buffalo, and somebody just threw a dead mouse out there that was cleared out by uh, Forbes. Around the far side, Forbes lifts it past Bob Clark, deep into the Philadelphia zone. 135 left on the Flyers' advantage. Shepard almost takes the puck away from Daly. Does. Looks in front. He's going to get a good shot. Screener saved by the Flyers, and now a penalty coming up, and that wipes out the advantage. Well, that's called even it up, Terry. Greg Shepard doing some tenacious forechecking, and big count daily going off for hooking. He was indicating to referee Bruce Hood that he swatted at the puck when Greg Shepard had it, and Bruce Hood just very nonchalantly just said, you hooked him, come with me for two. So as we said, Greg Shepard caused that one by keeping the puck in, forechecking, and Bob Daly goes off. With a minute and 26 remaining in the penalty to the Bruins. Right there is Forbes, right in Wayne Stevenson's goal crease creating it, and that was when Greg Shepard was doing all that forechecking and stick work and keeping the puck in our end, Don. Well, of course, if Boston had scored then, it would have been washed out anyway, because uh, Forbes was not only in the crease, he was almost in the net. All right, Shepard back to Milbury. He's going to get a screener. Short side save by Stevenson. Milbury is on rebound in the offensive left wing corner. Tied up by Jimmy Watson. There is O'Reilly to Stevenson. Here comes Park right on in. A shot. Not much of it. Deflected behind. Park over skate. DuPont there. Remember, the, the teams are even at five aside for another minute and nine seconds. 
That's the time remaining on the Rick Smith penalty. Jimmy Watson give and go behind the net with DuPont having trouble with it. Trying to lift it out past Lonsbury. Kept in by Park. Along the right wing boards to Shepard. Shot line of Stevenson looking for the tip for O'Reilly. Milbury chases uh, Kendrick Chuck behind the Philadelphia net. Now Jimmy Watson is tied up as the Bruins have been just superb in forward checking. Puck kicked away to Milbury. Up behind the net. And they look for more time here. Up to Lonsbury too far at center ice. And Park owns the puck. O'Reilly turns away from Lonfrey along the left wing board, jammed up by Ross, gets it off to Milbury, flips into the open near wing, nobody there except uh, Kendrachuk, who sends it deep back into his own left wing corner for Joe Watson, who comes out past O'Reilly at center ice. 1-0 Boston, 5.50 remaining second period, and the Bruins will get Rick Smith back in 18 seconds and have a power play for 34. Now Brad Park, we're just waiting and killing time behind his own net. Whips it up to Milbury. Rink wide pass too far for O'Reilly at center ice. Joe Watson with five seconds left from the Smith penalty. Over to Bladen. Bladen through to the Boston line. Dumps it in. Cut off by Cheevers. In front of Cheevers by Park. And they have the power play. Rattel rink wide. Over the line comes Schmartz. Cuts through the middle. Tries to get it back to Marcotte. Blocked off by McLeish and away to Barber at center ice. Tries to poke it past Schmartz. Goes to Rattel. Taken away at center. Off the stick of McLeish. McLeish to Barber. Barber has nowhere to go. Looks to get it back into his own zone. Does to Bladen in the near circle. Rink wide to Joe Watson. Watson looks to ice it. Kept in though by Marcotte. Back to Smart. Right wing corner. McNabb centering pass. Marvelous save again by Stevenson. And we've got two pucks out there and a stoppage of play. As some cutie pie decided to interrupt action. But play would have been allowed to continue even with the two out there. And they'd hope to have followed the original. As if Wayne Stevenson hadn't got enough troubles out there with Boston <laughs> pressuring with one puck. Some fan throws out a second puck for Steph to worry about, and that's what caused the stoppage in play. The one thing I don't know what they're doing is it's the home crowd that did it. Why is the faceoff not outside our blue line? As a player, that's the question I'd be asking, but possibly the rule says, wherever the puck was, the real puck, please stand up. No, play that's has face to continue, Terry. And the play was called because the real puck was shot out of the rink. I think I was told the reason that is is that if play were stopped every time a puck was thrown on, then you'd have the trouble every time a team was attacking the home crowd, crowd or the opposition fans would throw pucks on the ice. So you got to let it continue, which is nerve-wracking. Clark, tied up by McNabb, goes behind the net to Jimmy Watson. Throwing every man up again. They have Middleton out there with Cashman and McNabb. Goak with Ederstrand. And a play to Daly has trouble handling along his own board. Finally up to Clark at center with 440 left. Teams at full strength. Flyers back by a goal. Clark over the line. Rink wide pass right corner. There's Bridgman. Bounce hard by Ederstrand. Kelly in the corner with McNabb. The four of them jam it up and it kicks up the Cashman on his own left wing at his line. Through at center. Taken away by Daly. Daly's pass blocked off. And down goes Bridgman. And now Ederstrand is going to go off as the Flyers get another penalty. And they have the advantage at 15-42. Ederstrand for pulling down Bridgman. 4-18 remaining second period. 1-0 Bruins. Daryl Edderstrand goes off as uh, referee Bruce Hood goes over to the penalty time badge across the way. It'll be a trip on Edderstrand at 15.42 of this, the middle period. Flyers trail Boston, 1-0 on the strength of Rattel's fifth goal of the year, of uh, the playoff year, from Cashman and Middleton. And uh, Edderstrand, let's see, he, doesn't, he isn't even picked up in the totals as this is his first appearance uh, of the playoffs. So right now we get a chance to get back in this game with our power play. Right here is where Mel Bridgman takes off, kept the puck. Nice four checking by Mel. He was trying to break loose, but right there, Daryl Edderstrand just put the stick in his skate, just hooked him out. Then Mel Bridgman and Wayne Cashman had a few words as they met up in the corner before the whistle was blown it in that play. So get a goal right now on this power play. Don Jean, we're back in this tilt. Clark, McLeish, Leach, Daly, and Barber. Shepard and Forbes out along with Clark and Milbury, and now Jerry Cheevers. Back out. It requires uh, having more offense to stir it, although the Bruins continue to dominate. Clark, the draw near side, rolls it in front to Park, and he ices it. Bangs off to the right side of Stevenson as quickly after it to count Daly. Up in his own right wing to Clark. Clark away from Shepard, turns to Stevenson's right, flips the center to Barber, skips past him to McLeish. McLeish stopped once, stopped the second time by Park, who rolls it down into the flyer zone. Now Clark. Off by Forbes. Gets past him at center. Now he's challenged by Shepard as it goes through to Leach. Over the line. Leach is in. Taken down as it rolls into Cheevers. And we get a stoppage of play with Milbury sitting on the puck alongside the Boston goal. 
Jerry Cheevers just moved over because he knew that Milbury had the puck underneath him and uh, was a good excuse to uh, to tie up the puck. And he just protected the short side as he slid out to his left. Face off will be to Cheevers left. We're down at 129 left on the flyer power play. Edelstein offering uh, off for tripping. All right, Clark, Leach, McLeish, back to Daly at the point. Through his screen, good save, rebound in front. Leach takes it to Clark, a shot. And it went right back off Cheevers through McLeish and out the center ice by Shepard. McLeish was there for the second rebound. It went right through his skates from Cheevers. All right, the Flyers have it cut off in their own zone by the hip of linesman Neil Armstrong as McLeish up by pass Marcotte over the line, holds, fires it down behind Cheevers, skips to the near side to McLeish in front. And Leach had it to Barber, couldn't get his stick down. Now McLeish slides it loose to Park behind the net. Park gives it away near side. Shepard challenged by Daly. They jam it up. Park on the near side. Tries to get it back near point to Billy Barber. Does. He'll get a drive on the net. Tipped wide by uh, Cheevers. Daly goes back behind the net. Clark corner to McLeish. Now Cheevers tries to lift the net off. And as it's cleared into the slot for Clark, right past him, and nobody was out at the right point as Daly had penetrated. Now they've got 34 seconds on the advantage. Now Kindrachuk tries to lift it through to Zaleski. Is grabbed and spun around by Milbury as the Bruins dump at the center. Fires making a line change, and Neil Armstrong, county bodies, make sure they don't have too many. Now Lonsbrake takes it over the line, flips it into Milbury, who grabs just about 10 feet inside the Bruins line and hangs on with 19 seconds advantage left on the power play. Once again, John, it's too much, and it's too much Jerry Cheevers on that last play by Bobby Clark. The count shot a good one from the point. Cheevers made the save. The rebound came right to Clarkie. Come over to him. He wheeled around and shot it. And Cheevers comes right out again at him. There's where Cheevers makes the initial save off count daily. Starkey picked up that rebound, and Cheevers from right out again once again to challenge him. You know, you got to wonder uh, how he can be as agile. He really hasn't been tested tonight all that often. Hasn't seen that many shots. I do find it. Tipped away at center ice by Marcotte. 15 seconds. Here comes Moose back over the line. To Zaleski, top of the right circle. Looks to jump it in behind the net to DuPont. Dolt cuts down and knocks him away. Takes it up on the right wing. And tries to clear. Kept in on the far side by the Flyers. Batting at it. And finally, controlled by Marcotte. Is out of the box from Zetistrand. And they play up to him at center ice. And he's onside. Offside is Neil Armstrong. Well, this is one that they did call. Two in the first period they didn't call, and uh, they gave Boston uh, breaks uh, in on Stevenson. Edison came parallel to the red line, but did, in fact, pick up that puck on the Flyers' side of the red line. The pass emanating in from inside the Flyers, uh, uh, the Bruins zone. So top left of your screen, a couple of our players, not the ones you're looking at, Al Hill and Mike Corny, are new when you can just see their legs. And once again, Cheevers on our power play. Our fellows had some good shots, some good chances, but Jerry Cheevers once again was there to just, everything we had to throw at him, he just threw it aside. All right, now it's Holmgren with the Bridgman centered by Clark against Rattel, Schmatz, and Jonathan. To the point, Jimmy Watson threw a screen. Cheevers grabs club high left, drops off to Rick Smith, who fires it off Jimmy Watson's stick. It rolls to the flyer line. Joe Watson cuts across in front of Stevenson, up the center to Bridgman, who can't handle it. Kicks to Rattel, back to his own line for Rick Smith. Rink wide pass on the right side at center to Park. Through to Rattel, off the stick alongside Stevenson's left. Jimmy Watson behind the net, challenged by Jonathan, up to Bridgman. Tries to clear it, blocked by the pads of Bruce Hood. Jonathan at the right point. Crosses, it'll be taken by Rick Smith off the board. Dayton knew it by Holmgren, the puck on the near side. Kept at the blue line and finally slides out the center ice. Jimmy Watson after it. Pass Rick Smith over the line, surrounded by Bruins. Holes on the near side. Drops it off to Holmgren, stolen, and here comes Park. But Schmott, two on one, Joe Watson back. Park will take the shot, tries to take it, and he's blocked off by Joe Watson in a marvelous play by Thundermouth. As Jimmy Watson up to Holmgren, up the Boston line, a minute 15 on the period. Can't get past Rattel and Jonathan back at center for Park. Park has it taken away by Bridgman. Tries to flip it into the Boston zone. Double teamed in there is Schmaltz, who has a hole of Bridgman's leg. In comes Rattel to make it an even foursome right at the Bruin bench at the red line, far side at center ice for a stoppage. Well, the only, uh, the only goaltenders thus far to have uh, shutouts in this year's playoff competition, three of them by Dryden, one of them by Wayne Stevenson. Nice move by Joey Watson on that two-on-one between Brad Park and Bobby Schmaltz, who's out of your pitcher all alone in the slot. Joey, the only man back, went right after Park decided he might as well take him, make him make his play from there, as Steph would take Schmaltz out of that play. Joey just dove, took the puck into the corner, and a nice defensive play. 
Up here near side, Billy Barber with one minute left in the period. Bruins on top, one nothing. Cheever's off to his own right wing, to O'Reilly. The center ice, Shepard chasing DuPont, who has trouble handling it. Off past Kelly and taken away by O'Reilly into the flyer zone. Fluffed down by Bob Daly, and then a little control and flip to Moose DuPont. Hand pass, stoppage of play, face off in the Philadelphia end with 47 seconds left in the period. The long goal off the stick of Rattel at 10.45 of this, the middle period of play. And again, a close, hitty bar the door, door style of hockey game between these two clubs. Ooh. Hyde McLeish and Shepard, 219. Back to the point, Coke through a screen, Stevenson gloves, stops off behind for DuPont, and then the Bruins, every man up deep. DuPont lifts the center for Bob Kelly. Kelly has it just on the offensive side of center ice, as he might have had a two-on-one with Barber with just Milbury back. He was onside when that uh, pass landed at his feet, but he waited for it to bounce, and by the time he did make contact, he was, in fact, offside, and a good call by the linesman. Face off deep on the fly zone to the left of Stevenson as Don Cherry well, maybe the one-goal lead isn't uh, satisfying enough to him. He's frowning across the way. It shouldn't be, not in this type of game, because you can strike it any time. And one goal down with a period of hockey left is not a whole lot in playoffs. As we know, our team can strike, and hopefully we'll get back on this board. Get by Mr. Cheevers and maybe dent his confidence a little bit, put a few by him. He's been a stalwart performer for the Bruins this whole series so far, and the main stumbling block. 154 minutes now, Terry, and seven seconds without an even-strength goal. And just the power play goal the other night by Daly to break that chink. 154 minutes. Right, Rattel and Clark to the left of Stevenson out with Cashman down, Marcotte, Clark, and Smith as the Bruins look for some last-minute jamming and perhaps a shot back at the point. Smith throws screen, tipped wide by Rattel about waist high. Now Bladen up along his own left wing to McLeish. Comes out, but not all the way as he's checked off by Rattel. Clark follows up left side to Bladen. Over the Bruin line. Through, holes at the point. Left side pass to Leach, he's in! He goes to shoot, it's right in front! And they can't get it out! Oh, doctor! And here come the Bruins. Mark Cott with Cashman. Ten seconds left in the period, two on one. Cashman in! He goes to shoot! Oh, Jimmy Watson with a great swing check. And the Flyers at the other end had a chance to tie with an open net. And that'll do it. Two seconds, one second as the siren goes. Toward the marvelous second period. With the score, the Boston Bruins. One and the Philadelphia Flyers. No score. Defensively, it's Daly and Jim Watson. And for Boston, Milbury and Doak. Jim Watson from his own line, intercepted by Rattel. Dishmots across the line. His drive, kick save, Stevenson. Charms right to Daly, coming down the slot, back to help out. Now it's Jim Watson moving it up the left wing. Goes the length of the ice. It will miss the Flyers' crease. It will be icing against the Flyers. Boss has six shots now in the game, and he's now effectively playing the role of Reg Leach last year with Rattel. has done a marvelous job in this series setting him up on uh, those different occasions tonight. And he just has the one goal in this series. That's the power play goal in game one at the Spectrum. But overall, nine that still trail. Lanny McDonald in the uh, playoff leadership. Lanny McDonald had ten, and he did that all in six games. Rattel will face off with Clark in the circle to the left of Wayne Stevenson. Flyers need one. Makes this a brand new hockey game. The draw comes outside the line. Leach shoves it ahead for Brinkman. He gets behind Duke. Gets the shot off, but Leach a follow-up shot. Oh, and a glove saved by Chevers as it was about to hop up over the glove and into the open Boston net. How about that? Bridgman is struggling. Got inside. Got the one shot. Clark followed it up on the second. Good second effort by Mel Bridgman to get that shot on Chevers. Reggie Leach following up the play. Got a puck on it. Hit Chevers. Bounced up over almost going behind him into the net but he just reaches back on his knees scoops out of the air with his glove and hangs on for the face off and the event that Clark uh, would have gotten a piece of it Marcotte was moving in to help out the draw back to Joe Watson no place to go with it Bridgman across to Leach he's blocked by Rick Smith and here comes Boston Smith across the Flyers line open his spot uses him as a decoy and the shot is deflected high over the net picked up by Bladen up to Bridgman on the left wing Bridgman Tries to lead Leach out, passes behind him, and Rick Smith drills it back in again behind him. He flies that. Joe Watson has it. Cautiously moves out the left wing, ahead for Bridgman. Bridgman gets it by Park, icing his way out as it goes all the way to the Boston backboard. Milby around to Marcotte as the Flyers change in the go. 
Marcotte, left wing at center, drives over the outstretched glove of Stevenson and over the Flyers net. Now it's Lonsbury, ahead to center ice, blocked by Cashman. Here comes Shepard across the line. His shot blocked by DuPont, and McLeish is out. McLeish to Lonsbury at center. Goes through heavy traffic, broken up. Middleton to Cashman. Cashman goes back to the left wing. No one there but Holmgren. He just lifts it to center ice. Milbury moves it back in again, intercepted by LaPointe. Passes behind Lonsbury. Lonsbury goes for it, but Shepard's there first. Intercepted by LaPointe. LaPointe gets by Shepard across the Boston line to Lonsbury. Give and go for LaPointe, but his drive is on Shepard. Makes the short side save, and it's tied up for faceoff. We've got 18.09 left in the third period. It's one to nothing, Boston. Second game, two in the first game, and six on Thursday. I hope that gets less as this game goes on. We can need one right now to get back in this kill. On the faceoff, back to Daly for a screen. Blocked by Jonathan. Selesky's drive. Just deflected wide. Jim Watson got no, uh, not too much drive on that drive. And it's McNabb lifting it back to the Flyers backboard. Jarrett's in on Stevenson. And it rolls right into the glove hand, and he holds on for a faceoff. Oddly, the Flyers seem to have warmed to the pressure of the Bruins and a little more secure in their own end than they were much earlier in the game. Moving the puck very well now, Gene, as we mentioned. A few mental lapses in the early going of this game. They were giving it away. They've tightened up since then, starting to move the puck out as a unit, starting to find each other, bring it down to the Bruins. And we mentioned in the second period, shots 11 to 10 in our favor. We're starting to press. On the faceoff, Daly off his own backboard behind the net to the left wing. Barber can't move out. The forechecking of Dope keeps the puck deep. Now it's O'Reilly. O'Reilly out front. Short side save as Stevenson hung on. Loose puck comes to Selesky. Moves it to center ice with Kendrachuk. Chopped away from him. Kendrachuk picks it up. Lifts it down the left lane to the Boston backboard. Karam's in on Cheevers at the side of the net. Dope quickly around. Kept in by Daly to Selesky. To the backboard for Kendrachuk. He's checked by Dope. In to help out is McNabb. But to even the odds, Daly, uh, a correction, that's Selesky that moves in, and we get a whistle for a face-off to the left of the Boston net. That's been a strong point in the series for Boston. They've allowed the Flyers very little maneuverability in the offensive corners. Gene, as you know, and I've said numerous times, Freddie Shiro's theory is to keep that puck moving in the other team's end. Don't let them tie it up. Keep it going. Hope to get it loose out in the slot, get a shot on net. And you said Boston has very effectively cut that down on their end. They froze it almost at will tonight. We've got to keep the puck loose, keep it in play, get a good shot on it, and get one back to tie this game up at 1-1 as Boston leads it right now, 1-0. We'd like to pass on belated congratulations to the Sixers for their big win over the Celtics this afternoon to advance to the semifinals. Off the faceoff, Leach's backhander in a heavy traffic is flagged down by Rattel. Up to Marcotte at center ice. He's challenged by Clark. Cost up the puck to Joe Watson inside the Flyers line. But back comes Clark after Watson had cleared out. He's broken up. Kelly to Leach on the off wing. He's inside the Boston line. On the forehand, here comes Leach. The drive comes right by Joe Watson, and he had the open near side. Clark with the puck. Goes to Leach. Leach drives, hits Kelly, and the puck to the corner and clear, but not out. Layden keeps it in. Now it's Rick Smith. And now it's cleared by Bladen all the way back to the flyer zone. Joe Watson beats spots to it. Lines it around near side for Clark. Caroms to center ice. Picked up by Lonfrey. Lonfrey waits for open ice. Goes right side to Bladen. Back on the near side to Joe Watson. Back to Bladen at center. Knocked down by the skate of Brad Park. Now picked up by Rick Smith. Sending Rattel across the line. His drive played to the backboard by Stevenson. Joe Watson. Now to Bladen on the right wing, coming out of the flyer zone. Lead pass to Brentman. He's in. Oh, but he's play. Take it down. McClinch's drive is blocked by Shavers. Now it's Bridgman in the left wing corner. Comes back up the uh, near side and spots clears at the length of the ice. This will be icing against Boston, but it's waved off. Down goes Lonsbury. Smart. Uh, Shepard gets the puck. Challenged by Bladen along the near side of the corner. Behind the net, Jonathan gets away from Dupont. They still battle. Jonathan trying to get out of behind the net, but Dupont shoves it by O'Reilly. Now picked up by Shepard. Back behind the net. Picks a solid puck from Bridgman. Down goes Bridgman. And McLeish lifts the puck high back to the Boston zone. Milbury will be the first man on it. Goes behind the Boston net and out of the near side. Broken up by McLeish. McLeish out front to Lonsbury. Shot wide. This puck came on the slap by Riley. 
stepped in at the right point pile of points. Now Jonathan trying to move it out, can't do it. The point dumps it back to the Boston backboard. Milbury trying to move it out against the tight checking of Lonfrey. And to help out is Barber. We get a whistle for a stoppage of play deep in the Boston zone. 15.03 to go in the third period. It's 1-0 Boston. Doing what they have to the Flyers now, aggressively forechecking the Bruins and setting up some good opportunities. That one by McLeish, never seen by Cheevers. Cheevers never moved on it, but as, as Don mentioned, he didn't have to. Ricky didn't have much of an angle to shoot at the net. Now Cheevers came out far enough, so he left no net to shoot at. Okay, the puck cleared by Caspin deep in the flyer zone. Daly intercepted by Wensing. He gets a drive off, but it's off the mark, and Stevenson deflects it to the Flyers' right wing. Zaleski moves it out of the zone, but it's on the stick of Rick Smith, who backs into his own zone. Back to center ice for Cashman on the left wing, and we have a hand pass assessed against Boston, so the faceoff will be just outside the Boston line on the Flyers' right wing. To reiterate, I've never seen so much interference in a game where wingers off the puck and defensemen are bumped or grabbed before they can get make the play. And they're letting it go both sides, so the players are getting adjusted to it. Off the faceoff, Jim Watson drives to the left wing corner, hits the glass over the boys. Rick Smith by everybody, and it goes the length of the ice, and it will be icing against Boston. Jim Watson back on it first for the Flyers. News all day, every day on your Total News and Information Station, WCAU, CBS Radio News 1210. Take 1210 with you wherever you go, and stay on top of all the late-breaking news events, worldwide, nationwide, and Delaware Valley-wide. When you need news, WCAU Radio News 1210 is there. Well, Gene, we have 1427 remaining. Coach Don Cherry of the Boston Blues right now pacing up and down at Especially in the elevated bench behind his bench, so you can see his players a little clearer and what's going on in the ice. Bruins leading 1 0 at this stage, but we just need one good shot right now to get us back in it. Get a little spark to us, a little life to us, and our fellows are starting to carry the play a little better to the Boston Bruins right now, so let's get a goal. It's going to be Kendrichuk, Barber, and Seleski for the Flyers. McNabb on the draw for Boston, and he's got the puck. McNabb out of his own zone to center ice. Flyers down the right lane. Karen's behind the net, stopped there by Stevenson. Stevenson looks, deals it off to Kibbeshek. He stops, back the other way, flip pass to Joe Watson, who starts out on the left. Lead pass, Seleski, right on the money. He's across the line, but offside is Bill Barber, who is checked into the zone. Smart play by Wensick, and now we've got to pile up along the near side. And they're all piled in, and quickly they're going to be separated. I don't think anybody wants any penalties for any reason. Terry, Billy Barber, always strong, always tough. It's bumped off, uh, it's knocked down easily, and you just have to think that if the knee isn't bothering him, then it uh, is bothering him mentally, and he's just not the strong Billy Barber of the past, and uh, he's not being able to get the plays around the net. Billy would be the last one to tell you that uh, he was looking for an excuse or whatnot, but I know that they wanted to operate on, the, on Billy's knee, but Billy said, no way, you don't operate on this knee until after the season is over, so that shows you that even though it's hurting him, Billy's willing to play in pain and try just for the sake of the club. So you know his knee's hurting him, but he's giving his best out there. Okay, off the faceoff, Boston controls in their own end. Brad Park on the left now to Rick Smith, and he moves it to center. To Rattel across the Flyers line. Shot is blocked by the front. They battle for it in the circle to the right of Stevenson. Now at the top of the slot, Smots flips it. Carams to center ice, offside delay against... Boston, but DuPont gets it out of the zone. Stopped at the, play, the Boston line by Rick Smith. He sends it the length of the ice. This will be icing against the Bruins. I think desperation right now, Terry, is making the Flyers a bit stronger than the Bruins. Right now, our fellas know you've got one shot. When you're down to 13-37, you're down a goal. They can look at right now at Big Moose DuPont and his young kid that joined him on Rick LaPointe. And, Don, you mentioned earlier, congratulations to the Sixers on their big win today. And I just wonder if Daryl Dawkins can skate. Hey, you can take any one of them and put them on skates. They'll all be uh, at least as big as the count, and mm -hmm. most of them a lot bigger. Put them on double runners. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to argue with them? <coughs> Maybe Billy Cunningham can make a comeback on a new sport. Okay, face off to the left of Cheevers. Clark tries to draw to, Kim, uh, to Bridgman, but it's picked off by the Boston defense. Schmatz clears it. Shallow in the fly is on, and Leach tracks it down. Circles right, up to Clark at center. He's poke checked off the play by Rick Smith, but here comes LaPointe. He stops at the Boston line, barrels in a mark cut. Now it's Rattel, intercepted by Leach at the red line. 
Leach trying to go through heavy traffic along the board. He spun off the play by Park, and Park is done. Rattel trying to move it out, flips it back to the flyer zone. On it for the Flyers is LaPointe, quickly up to DuPont. Picked up by Bobby Smart, but we get a whistle for an offside against Boston with 13.03 to go in the third period. It's 1 0 Bruins. Flyers have 13.03 to get one at least. They trail 1 0 and trailing three games to none in this series. McLeish between Lonfrey and Holmgren. Flyers control daily out to center right. Daly from long range, and we have a Bruin down who seems hurt. Jonathan got a stick right up in the eye, and it may have been on the follow through of Bob Daly's stick, and he's holding that face. And of course, you keep your fingers crossed that it isn't around the eyes. We've had too much of that this year. I didn't quite follow that play at all. You know, I was watching the puck go up ice when Jonathan. He grabbed his face, and as you mentioned, it might be Big Bob Daly. Right there is where he's holding his face already. And I'm not sure just how Jonathan got that, but he went down in a hurry, held onto it. It's by the nose and nose. the mouth. Yeah, it looks the nose. So. so thankfully, it's not his eye. It's just underneath the nose. So he's up and moving again and all right. So as you said, Gene, oh, there's no eye injuries. That's one thing that we've had enough of. We want to stay away from them. With well, it's certainly something that can't be serious enough for him to go directly to the Bruin dressing room. Now the doctor over there takes a look, and they are going to take a further look, although he doesn't appear yet to be headed down the chute. They're just going to work on that nose on the far side of the Bruin uh, bench. I think they're trying to cauterize it, uh, and then he'll be ready to go again. But meanwhile, action down below. Boston from their own zone. Doke off the stick of Shepard, but Daly's back to McLeish. He's dumped at the line by Terry O'Reilly as they continue their battle for the loose bucket. It's Doke with it. Goes across in the left to Milbury, and he's through center ice. Lifts it to the Flyers' uh, backboard along the near side. O'Reilly almost climbing over Lonsbury for it. Lonsbury tripped up by O'Reilly. Jimmy Watson trying to find running room. He's double teamed in that right wing corner. Now gets help from Lonsbury. Shepard trying to back out with a puck. Cleared by Doak, who had penetrated too deep and has to go back to center ice with it. Crosses left again to Milbury. This time he goes to the right of Stevenson. Picked up by Jim Watson. Quickly up to McLeish, who comes out of the zone on the left wing. McLeish across the Boston line. Stops. Dumps in. Around behind the net to the far wing. Intercepted by Lonsbury. Lonsbury back to Holmgren. He's broken up, and here comes Wensink. Wensink with Shepard. Shepard takes the lead pass. Drives at long range. Caroms. Stevenson, uh, back to Stevenson. He carries to the far wing. Now Rick Smith's drive to the backboard. Stevenson catching uh, a piece of that. Now it's Brad Park off the right wing boards as Winston is almost dumped. Cashman dumped with Joe Watson behind the Flyers net. And now it's Daly with Barber trying to move it out. Barber has the loose puck. Cuts behind Winston to center ice. Here comes Barber. Takes the drive. It uh, slides into the zone behind him. And it's returned to the Flyers zone by the Boston defense. Now it's Watson up to Barber, along the left wing at center to Kinderchuk. He's bottled up by Park in to help out his Middleton. Now it's Bladen with the loose puck. From the red line to the Boston left wing corner, Cheevers has to tie it up as Kinderchuk was dangerously close. There's been very few opportunities that Cheevers has had to make that kind of play as the Bruins have been marvelous in keeping the pressure away, but the Flyers are uh, playing a tough third period, and uh, they continue to work this way. They'll get the opportunities. Of they got 11-13 to bang one home. One to nothing Bruins in the third. Face-off will be to the right of Cheevers. Kendra Chuck trying to draw it back to Joe Watson, but it's cleared back to center ice by Wayne Cashman. Now, McNabb intercepting. Rise from the line. A quick save by Stevenson, and he had to be quick. Barber trying to move it out along the near side. Gets by Brad Park. He's tripped up by Park. Cashman with a loose puck. Force, uh, forcing the players, Kendra Chuck. Here comes McNabb. Gets by DuPont. The drive wide. McNabb tied up behind the flyer net by DuPont as he tried to follow his own drive up. Now it's Kendra Chuck at center ice on the right wing. Kendra Chuck trying to penetrate. Karen right to Cashman. And back comes Boston. Cashman across the flyer's line. He has Middleton breaking. Middleton in tight. Loose puck. Cleared out of the crease by DuPont as that puck was almost rolling in. And now it's the Flyers trying to break, but the pass off the mark and set up for Kinderchuk. Back comes Cashman, and offside is Middleton, who just now got from inside the Flyers' net. We've got a, uh, a timeout down below. 10-20 left in the third period. Flyers trail Boston 1-0. 
Back here at Boston Garden, 10-20 left in regulation, and Wayne Stevenson came up with another miraculous save to keep it a one-goal game. That's the play there, Gene, where I thought Cashman had stuffed that home, but Steve stepped up with the big save. Off the faceoff, Rattel penetrates, but he's pushed to the ice, and the play is broken up by Bob Daly. Puck driven on Stevenson at long range off the stick of Milbury, but it's controlled by the Flyers. Jim Watson up to Kelly on the left wing, just deflects at the length of the ice. Milbury will catch up to it before it's icing. Quickly around the far side, kept in by... Now, Daly, popped over his stick. Here comes Rattel. His spot's open. Intercepted by Clark, who deflected it right into Stevenson. Now it's still the right point. He's checked by Kelly, who came up high. Loose puck. Jimmy Watson up the near side. Kelly checked again by Doe. Clark checked Rattel. Loose puck in the Flyers' right wing corner. And it's finally whistled dead by referee Bruce Hood. Face off to the left of Stevenson. Clarkie doing some nice back checking on that last play. Come back. Broke up a nice two on one. Tried to get control of the puck, but very luckily it went right to Steph as Clarky went to clear it in the corner. He never got full wood on it with Schmatz coming right in there. Right there, Clarky went to shoot it into the corner, but he didn't get full wood, but it, the puck went right to Wayne Stevenson anyways who controlled it. Here I am giving him credit for just deflecting it to his goaltender, knowing that he had a man coming in off the right wing. Oh, well. Face off to the left of Stevenson, Rattel and Clark battle. Down goes Rattel. As referee Bruce Hood is letting all but the very flagrant go here in the third period. Jimmy, uh, Joe Watson clears it to center, picked up by Bridgman. Bridgman, the trailer is Leach on the left wing, goes deep in the Boston corner for it. But Rick Smith has it, almost intercepted by Clark. Goes behind the Boston net to the far corner. Brad Park starts out. He's broken up by Clark in to help out Bridgman. Bridgman to Bladen, intercepted by Rattel, re-intercepted by Leach. Leach centers it to Clark, but it's cleared out of the zone by Rattel. And Joe Watson back on it across the way in the Flyers zone. Goes behind his own net, up to the Flyers line. McLeish broke it up. O'Reilly deep in the right wing corner, looking for help. Joe Watson had it there. Picked, it Picked up by McLeish. McLeish out of the zone on the right wing. McLeish across the line. Inside the Boston zone, here comes Holmgren. He overskates it. Loose puck. O'Reilly back to Boston. And he's across the Flyers line with Marcotte. Marcotte can't handle it. And McLeish takes it behind his own net. Waiting out front is Shepard. McLeish up on the right wing. Holmgren, manhandled by Wensing. Now it's LaPointe out of his own zone near side. Doak wraps it right back in down the right wing, boys. Stevenson sets it up for DuPont. O'Reilly crunched by LaPointe as he cut and crossed in front of the crease. Puck cleared out of the flyer zone. Back to the Boston zone. Doak crosses quickly to Milbury on the left. Blows puck at center ice at the red line. O'Reilly wraps it down the far wing. And DuPont has to go chase again. Flyers have got to come to Boston, and the Bruins know it. On free. Delay outside against Boston as Wensick had kicked that puck in. As sticks are coming up a little bit higher now. Puck cleared uh, back to the Boston backboard. McLeish has Milbury tied up. Wensick gets on the puck. Behind his own net to Doak on the near side. He's taken to the boards by Lonsbury. Now it's Pete McNabb. Quickly up to Wensick off his skate. This will be icing unless it's waved off. It's icing against Boston. Terry, this game is matching the excitement of uh, a great Stanley Cup game. 7.26 left in regulation. one to nothing Boston. 7.26 left as Cheevers looks on. He's held the Flyers off. Almost 170 minutes of play from an even strength goal. Okay, Kendrachuk back to Daly. The drive deflected wide by Brad Clark. Back to the left point, Jim Watson's drive. Blocked by Wayne Cashman. And Rick Middleton, who slid into it. Middleton trying to move it out as he's taken down. Puck still in the Boston end. Seleski battles for it. Finally cleared out. Here comes McNabb. He battles Kendrachuk right in front of the Flyers bench. Cleared to the far wing inside the Flyers zone. And again, it's the count. Bob Daly to center ice. Barber tripped up by Rick Middleton. Now it's Middleton back. Barber trying to trip him up as Stevenson clears it out. Back to center ice. Will be a delay offside if Boston uh, makes an attempt to keep the puck in the zone. But it's Daly quickly out of to center ice. Flips the backhander in as he's upended by Brad Park. Daly quickly back in position as Boston starts out. McNabb puts it back to the fly zone. Shallow immediately returned to center ice by Daly. Daly bumped by Cashman, and he's slow to get up. He felt that thump. Now it's Kelly out of his own zone. 
Tried to go to Clark. It'll be Clark. Now it's Bilbrey there first, icing against the Flyers. Juan Finn signal offside at the same time, but Neil Armstrong caught the icing with 6.19 left in regulation. Harry, we're maybe going to break a jinx here, we hope. Checking back, the last time the Flyers were blanked at a playoff game came in game three of the quarterfinals of the 1973 playoffs when Maniago shut them out at Minnesota five to nothing. And the Flyers have now gone 58 playoff games without being shut out. As I recall, that series uh, was replete with shutout goaltending. Okay, face off to the right of Stevenson. Rattel paired with Bobby Clark on the faceoff. On the draw, Revs Leach lifts it back to center ice. Now it's Kelly going for it. Gets inside the Boston line. The drive wide of Stevens on the far side. Leach the rebound. Goes behind the net. Back to Leach. Overskates it. Sweeps it to the backboard, but Rattel moves it ahead for Marcotte. Wing to wing. Spot. Spot. Across the Flyers line. First thing. Over to Steve. Back. Down Marcotte. On the rebound. And Boston leads it 2 nothing. Bobby Smart to come in over the blue line. Delay, delay, delay. Took a shot on step. Just made a good save on Smart's shot. Just went to the right of the net. And Donnie Marcotte was breaking in from the left hand side. Just picked up the rebound. And I think Steph made the initial save. And Marcotte got his own rebound and backhanded it in over the stick side of Step to get Boston a 2 nothing lead in this game. Here's where Smart wait, wait. Let's Rattel go to the net. Steph makes the save right there. Marcotte brings the puck back. He just backhands it on a strong wing. Stevenson after Steph had made a good save on number 11, Smart, as, as Rattel broke right to the net. So that gives Boston a 2 nothing lead with 5.55 remaining in the game. Well, my comment got a goal, but at the wrong end. Okay, on the faceoff, Boston controls at their own line. Rick Smith to the near side for Brad Clark. Back to Rick Smith. Bridgman intercepts. Tries to send Clark through and does. He gets behind Clark. Clark's drive out the glove hand. Loose puck in the slot. Played out by Rick Smith to the left wing and Marcotte. Dumps it all the way back to the Flyers zone across the way. DuPont on it. As the Flyers change of the go, here comes DuPont to center. Gets by O'Reilly, broken up by Brad Clark. They battle for it in front of the Flyers bench down below us. O'Reilly gets inside the zone. And finally, we get a whistle-stopping play on outside Boston. That makes the task now apparently monumental, Terry, as they now need to score three to the Bruins. None sometime in the remaining time here and overtime to win this one. Well, we'll start with one good shot and go from there. It only takes two good shots to tie it up and Off one to win. Off. McLeish drives it back in the zone to Jim Watson up to Lonsbury off the left wing boards inside the Boston zone. Rick Smith catches up to it. Almost drove it into his own goaltender as Brad Park moves it out, but not completely out. Lonsbury keeps it in. Cheevers feeds O'Reilly on the right wing. He leads Shepard at center ice. Shepard rolls a bouncing puck that's uh, caught up to by Daly before it ever reached Stevenson. Flipped uh, off the stick of Greg Shepard into the crowd right below us. We'll have a face off inside the flyer zone. We kept saying a typical flyer goal in the past, the jam up. Uh, both Boston goals tonight in the crease. Both of them the other night uh, in close. Uh, three or four in Philadelphia. The overtime goal by Riley, and they've been jamming in front and making it pay off. Dolan Puck, Wentzing, closing. Fire through the goal crease as he was off the shooting range. Now it's Doke across to the left of Milbury. Blues Puck in front. Shepard, great save, Stevenson. Stevenson had to make a follow-up save as in an attempt to clear it to the backboard, Jim Watson fired right into Stevenson. And Wensick, just as he was dumped, shoved it in on net. A nice second effort by Wensick as he was tied up by Paul Holmgren. Switches down. Here's where Steph right here blanks number 19, Greg Shepard, on a real nice save. Right there is what Wensick out of your picture was laying down. Flipped it at the net. Here comes Shepard in on Wayne Stevenson. Tries to backhand it. Wayne kicks it out with his right pad. The puck is down and it'll come right onto Wensick's stick. You can see right there just out of your picture as Wensick was going down, flipped it to the open net. Steph just reached out with his hand, brought it into him to keep this game 2 0 for Boston with 4.40 to go. One good shot gone, then another one. Okay, off the face off to the right of Stevenson. It comes to the near wing. Joe Watson on it. Ahead for Kinderchuk at center. He's got Zaleski breaking. 
can't get behind Kaspernes. He's tied up. And that's the type of interference that uh, we've been talking about in this series that's not being called. Zaleski to Bladen on the far wing. Keeps the puck deep in the Boston zone. Bladen looks for someone to go to. Goes behind the Boston net. Left wing corner, Zaleski. Zaleski can't get a shot. Battles to keep the puck in the Boston zone on the left wing. Now it's Bill Barber. To Kindrachuk in the corner. Tries to throw it out front. Picked off by McNabb. And lifted back to the flyer zone. Will it be icing? Yes. Icing against Boston as Bladen is the first man on it. Well, Marcotte scored a big goal in the first game when the Flyers were shorthanded, or when the Bruins were shorthanded, to give them a, a lead at that time of 3-1. to one. As Bernie Perrant, the lone figure, the lost figure here. So Marcotte got the shorthanded goal there, and he picked up uh, this one here, which may be the clincher, as the Flyers have less than four minutes to get a pair up on the board. Flyers will go with Clark against Rattel. This is to the right of Cheevers, who's much further out of his net than most goaltenders, even for a faceoff. Boston controls. Clark gets it out of the zone, down the near side, into the Flyers' zone. Rick LaPointe tracks it down. He sets up behind his own net. Quickly up to Kelly, back to LaPointe, and he moves it straight up to center. It gets to center right, broken up by Rattel. Back comes Clark on the left, takes the drive, off the glove hand of Stevenson, over the glass, and out of play. Certainly you can't accuse the Bruins of sitting back now as they're taking the uh, tremendous concentration and confidence that they have. Uh, they've got the world going for them now. They lead 3 nothing in series, 2 nothing here with just 3.35 left, and the Giant in the net so far, flawless. Okay, when play resumes, it'll be dropped in the circle to the right of Stevenson. Flyers go with Clark between Bridgman and Leach with Moose, DuPont, and Rick LaPointe defensively. Boston counters with Rattel between Schmatz and Marcotte. Rick Smith and Brad Park defensively. This is to the right of Stevenson. Goes back to the left point. Rick Smith through a screen. It's wide to the far side. Caroms to the Flyers' left wing. Bridgman ahead to center ice. Schmatz drills it right back in again. Broken up by DuPont. Gets it to LaPointe. LaPointe spins away from Marcotte. Double teamed. Feeds Bridgman on the left wing. Inside the line, Clark can't handle it. And it's cleared right back out again. Rick Smith to Rattel. Intercepted by Bridgman ahead to Clark. Clark tries to send Lee through again. Boston breaks. Here's Rattel. Jumps over Rick LaPointe by cutting in front of Rattel to take possession of the puck is Bobby Clark. Clark looks. Drills off the ankle of Rattel to center ice. And now it's Schmatz outside the line, flipping back in. Glove saved up high by Stevenson. And here comes LaPointe out of his own zone to center ice. Hits the red line. Bounces one in wide of Cheevers, but he slides out to his right to stir it behind as Doak again comes up high with a stick this time on Bridgman. Puck cleared deep in the flyer zone. Icing waved up. Jim Watson behind his own net as we're down to two and a half minutes left in regulation time. Flyers trail by two. Feed to McLeish off the Flyers' right wing. Now it's Lonsbury with it. Lonsbury hits the red line. Puts it over the head of Milbury. Behind the Boston net. Cheevers almost mishandled it and ties it up for a faceoff deep in the Boston zone. 2.16 left in regulation time. The Flyers trail Boston 2-0. Kelly and Tass of scoring twice in 2.16 are wrapping up the gear for the season. That's the time remaining in regulation and they're down by two. Okay, face-off will be to the left of Cheevers. Kendrachuk with Zaleski and Barber up front. DuPont and Bladen defensively. Boston has Shepard out there in the face-off. Barber has it. Tries to go back to Kendrachuk. Deflected to the backboard. Milbury tries to roll it out. Kendrachuk hooked. Hooked again by Milbury. Now held by Milbury. As Bruce Hood is letting everything go. They dig away at it. Barber. And finally, we got a whistle to stop play as Marcotte comes into the backside of Barber to jam him into the corner to stop play. 2.01 left on the clock as the players finally separate. Boston sends a new defensive combo on. Brad Park and Rick Smith replacing Doak and Milbury. Flyers stay with Kim to Chuck Barber and Selesky, Bladen and DuPont. To the left of Cheevers, Barber tries to go through. Marcotte goes down, and we get another whistle as Marcotte is sitting. 
on the loose puck. We'll try it once more in that same spot to the left of Jerry Cheevers. The Canadians shut out the uh, Islanders last night in their fourth game to go ahead three games to one. That final was 4 nothing. DuPont, a kinder chuck, back to Bladen. Blocked the first time by Marcotte, second time goes behind the net for it. Zaleski battles Park with it. Down on the ice behind the net is Rick Smith. And the puck finally comes loose, and it's tied up for faceoff, still in the Boston end. But of course, all of this is chewing up valuable time. The Flyers need two to send this into sudden death overtime, and they have but a minute, 48 seconds in which to do it. Of course, these same two teams scored three goals within a minute, uh, within 38 seconds of each other. So it's not impossible. Wayne Stevenson uh, checking with Bobby Clark at the Flyers end of the ice. Whether or not he's going to be pulled, I guess he is. At least he wants to come over. He's asking Fred Shiro. Yeah. He's going to be pulled, and the Flyers are going to go all out. No difference to lose three zip as it is uh, two zip. And with a sixth attacker, maybe it'll give them uh, the edge that they're looking for to get one on the board. You can't get two until you get one. And, of course, that's true of games as well. The Flyers know full well that the referee is standing over them. They're on the floor, and he is counting, and he's reaching eight. They don't want to be counted out. They're not ready to go yet. Clark in the faceoff. McLeese tries to go back to Daly, but it goes between the two of them. It's wide of the open net. Leach is there first, and it's icing as apparently a Boston stick propelled it the length of the ice. So it comes all the way back in the circle to the left of Jerry Cheevers. It appeared as though it was the Flyers faceoff man, Bobby Clark, that drew it back. Okay, set to go again. Leach and Daly back at the point position as the Flyers net is wide open. Clark tries to go back, but it's forced deep in the Boston zone. Rick Smith around the near side, intercepted by Laundrie in the left way. He's challenged by Cash when they both go down. DuPont digs. Brad Park gets a stick on it. Around the dash on the far side. Mar Marcotte gets a stick on it. Daly battles to keep it in. A drive by Leach, tipped over the net. Clark behind the net, and it's tied up there for face-off. It'll be dropped in the circle to the left of Jerry Cheevers once more. We're now down to 118 left in regulation time. As again, players from both clubs get a bit feisty behind that Boston net to our left. Cashman is there. Brick Smith, Clark, DuPont. And they quickly separate. Flyers trail 2-0. They need two to keep this game alive and the series alive. Puck uh, got it messed in the twine behind the Boston net on a drive through heavy traffic that was just tipped wide. Leach got full wood on that one. Flyers have out there Clark, Lonsbury, McLeish, Holmgren, Leach, and Daly. Their net is wide open. Stevenson has been pulled for an extra skater up front. Shepard against Clark on the faceoff. Rick Smith again gets his stick on it. Daly again keeps it in. Now Marcotte breaks it loose as they all gang up across the way. Lonsbury keeps it in. They battle for it at the line. It comes to center ice. No one back. Leach, though, a correction, McLeish, breaks out of the pack to go back and retrieve it. One minute left in the game and could be in the series as Boston keeps the puck deep in the flyer zone. Daly around to Clark on the far wing. Intercepted by Mark Cogney, scores into an empty net. And with 47 seconds left, it would appear as though that goal there pretty much put it out of reach for the Flyers. It's Marcotte's second goal of the night, his fifth of the playoffs. And it gives Boston a 3-0 lead, and it should come unassisted. Time of the goal comes at 19-13. As we look at it again, Marcotte picked up a loose puck in the slot, and of course, with Stevenson pulled, 
he had little else to do but just nudge it straight ahead and it went into the open flyer net. So Marcotte, a pair of goals, the second and third for Boston. And they lead it 3-0. 47 ticks. The Flyers are away from elimination, but it's been one heck of a series, let me tell you. Face off at center ice, Kendra Chuck. Now it's inside the flyer zone as Mark got uh, LaPointe. Now intercepted by McNabb. Closing on Stevenson. Gets the drive away. Tip wide by Stevenson. Centering pass from McNabb. Intercepted by Barber. Ahead to Selesky to Kendra Chuck. Kendra Chuck gets it to the Boston backboard. Milbury is on it. Intercepted by Selesky. Hops over his stick. 20 seconds left in the game and in the series. Bladen from his own zone, the length of the ice. Kinderchuk on the rebound. Brad Park, eight seconds are down to single numbers. Bladen to Seleski. Fans on a shot. Three seconds, two, one. It's all over. The Bruins have eliminated the Flyers in four straight, but not before the Flyers left an indelible mark on every member of this Boston Hockey Club. This game, the long game of the four-game set, that was not a one-goal victory for Boston. But this uh, game remained scoreless until midway through the second period when Rattel scored. Then it was Marcotte up here in the final period. And the traditional handshaking ceremony goes on down below us with the exception of Jerry Cheevers who never was won much for the pleasantries that normally go with this. And of course, uh, the rest of the players going through the receiving line, as it were, man by man, John Wensink, Reg Leach, as Dave Forbes and Gilbert, and of course, Leach followed by Bernie Perrant, Bobby Schmatz, and it's a jubilant packed house here at the Garden, and understandably so. Well, the Flyers have had their days of glory. Boston has had theirs. And they're now on the right to face the winner of the other semifinal round. Final score, Boston 3, Flyers up there.